This call is now being recorded. Perfect. Okay, welcome to the Shop Class Podcast. All right. I'm your host, Mr. G, and uh, we're here today. We got special guests on location. We're here at Revolt Systems with Eddie. Howdy, howdy. All right. And we got Snow. And I'm sorry, I forgot your name again. The Wheeling Welshman. How you doing? Yeah. Okay. Do you not know who this is? <laughs> you don't know who the Wheeling Welshman is? No. The Wheeling Welshman. He's really? He's literally the fastest man on the Really? He's the fastest man in the world in two categories. That's two categories. Hell yeah. Dude, we gotta get him. We'll pull up his profile. That's what that's what Duke's gonna work on. We'll have like a little side profile going. The wheeling quelch for the wheeling quelch. Nice. So uh usually I start with the first question, which is uh, did you have shop class growing up? But before we get there, let's take a ride in these crazy machines, right? Okay. Yeah, chase after you guys with this thing. Nah, 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 it's easy move. All right, here we go. Why is that? You can't chase it. Okay. Okay, so we're live, and I will. You didn't pull the hood on this thing yet. You want to do that now, or you want to do that after the drive? Let's do it now. All right, Ron is coming. Yeah. To us from California, he's at a conference. at another electric conference. Oh, my God, there's so much room. That's ridiculous. Let me get in there. Yeah. Oh my God. So this this is the way we work on this truck. Oh my goodness. Stand on the cross member. You know these these these. What? You don't need a chase truck. Get down in there. The shot. The 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 the, the what's it called? The um, the fenders are pretty nice to sit in. So wow, I'm about six foot five, two hundred pounds. Snow over here is about six foot two, six, six, one, six two one, thirty-five, two thirty-five. Me and him both fit in here quite nicely. Oh yeah. my god! Uh, and we worked on this motor together in the same thing, and uh, they're probably uh, there was room for for other people to come join us too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow! We considered putting wow. a hot tub under here. <laughs> Dude, that would be the dude. That would do it. And and this is not puny, even though it looks small here. This thing, what does it got? Like how much horsepower is that? Uh, it's over six hundred, and it pushes over a thousand foot pound foot pounds of torque to the yoke. About a foot pound. Oh my god, Duke, are you seeing this? A couple. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Good. To one ratio in the uh, rear end, or we're shooting okay, about three and a half thousand foot pounds of torque to the ground. Oh my god. Yeah. And uh, Duke, you're gonna get to see that firsthand here in just a second. Yeah. Oh yeah, Duke, you can hear us and you see everything. Yeah, I just muted the other camera, so now you guys I are can't hear. It. But yeah, he's talk yeah, he's good. He's yeah, Ron, you're up. good. You're I good. I think so. Give me a thumbs up. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. Oh, I see. Speaker. Go ahead. Sorry, Duke. Now I can hear you. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I just had to mute the other camera. I was getting oh, some perfect. feedback, but now you guys are great. Looks good. Uh, okay. Right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, so we try to keep our conversions really simple. Wow. Look at this. Kind of, kind of our claim to fame. Um, we're not the other EV guys. We make this like, everyone's like, oh, they're, you got to do all this stuff. And always wiring and BS. Look, look, wait, right here. Look at that. that. that this is my wiring harness right here. Wow. That, that's nothing. And then cool lines and the high voltage. Did wow. It? Positive and negative. Remember RC yep. cars? Yeah. Cool lines, lines. Four bolts. Hold that whole damn thing in. Wow. <laughs> Where's that going to? This is going to a little display or something? That goes into, we use a T2C on this one to okay. the controls. Right. Um, that sits underneath the dash, and that basically runs all our cam commands and everything else. And then also this couples to a throttle pedal that is located, you know, in the standard position. That's in amazing. The standard position. All right. <laughs> Take me for a ride. All right, let's go for a ride. Okay. I'm telling you now, dude, we got two speeds in this guy. <laughs> go. Okay. All right. Let's do it. You don't race you in my Tesla. Oh, my God. I'm nervous, dude. <laughs> dude. This is awesome. And I love the uh, lack of wires. Yeah, no wires, dude. So this is an electric motor, right? So we have a braking system. We call it the Wii Brake. The Wii There's break. the Wii Brake. <laughs> we, bought, we all have to use it. <laughs> Wow. All right. Sit back there. You okay. It's quiet. We're already moving and it's super quiet. And look, this is the Tesla Mino following us. 
Oh my goodness. And that's a world record car right there. That is the world's fastest electric vehicle. Oh my God. We uh, we pushed that girl 359 miles an hour top speed. And the record, the national record is 353.8. And that's an average of two runs. Wow. Wow. How are we doing, Duke? Does it look good? Yeah, we're good. We're good still. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Nice. All right. Should I strap in? <laughs> I, I don't see you strapped in, so I'll just follow your lead. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so fast and this is a big truck we just drove like it's a sports car oh. Oh my God. What? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right, so we'll wait for Eddie B here, and then we'll. Uh... Oh my God, dude, this thing hauls ass. Oh, it's, it looks it's, like it's, it. It's pretty cool. Looks, like, looks nice, you're, dude. You're blown, you're blown by those palm trees. You're not in Jersey anymore, Ron. So let's go out here and, and uh, let's hit like a thirty roll and take off. Um, I don't know. Let's go down. Let's have Boulevard and then come around the back side. Uh, what's better? Let's go this way. All right. I'll follow you. <laughs> so that's the test amino. That's one of our shop trucks. Yeah, I love it. That's great. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, this is insane. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels like you're in a motorcycle. She, <laughs> it, it, she pulls hard. Dude. <laughs> I got that acceleration giggle. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, That's quiet too, Ron. I can't even hear anything. Really? It's crazy. It's a full pickup truck. She's uh, 4,200 pounds with me in it. So, call it 4,000 pounds. That's crazy. Okay, but think about fast. So what we're going to do is we'll give you a little taste of what she does up against the test if we go back down. Oh, back to all right. All right. <laughs> I'm glad and to see that. Yeah. Everything you saw in the shop, everything's registered and on the road. Wow. Wow. Um, so a lot of shops you'll see they talk about what they're going to do and vaporware. Yeah. But we actually have rubber on the road. Right. Nice. This is awesome. <laughs> so here you get a chance to get Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you're having fun, dude. I love this thing. Dude. Yes. And it cars. I mean, that's my day. And you know, I have a 1962 Chevy Apollo. Oh, wow. I got an S-car motor in it, a six-speed transmission. I got all the goodies, right? Wow. This thing, this rusty old truck will outrun your hands down. Wow. I got a nearly 600 horsepower motor in that Apollo. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> see, see you later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Woo! So, what do you think about the rebound? <laughs> yeah, man, this is serious. <laughs> I can't 
every one of them a pickup truck. <laughs> Yeah, pickup truck. Yeah. Yeah. What would, what's what's that Mustang like? Oh my god. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the Mustang is is comparable. She's okay. a little lighter, so she may be yeah. a little faster from a dig. But yeah. this is going to be faster from a thirty mile an hour roll. Just wow! Faster. Wow! Really? Is it is it the same motor setup and everything? Yes, everything's the okay. Same. All right. Wow. Did you, did you get all that? Yeah, man, that was awesome. <laughs> How's that for the shop class podcast? <laughs> Did you have shop class? <laughs> oh no, yeah, we we were getting it. That was crazy. And we were still <laughs> pulling. That was crazy. Oh this is a pickup truck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this thing, you would have never thought. <laughs> Revolt systems, man. I guess this is the battery. Jeez. Uh, not the gas tank. No. <laughs> oh, my God. Are the tires warm? Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of warm. <laughs> Oh my god, that was wow. That was awesome. <laughs> okay. Coming in. That, that was amazing. That was awesome. It's pulling and pulling. It's unbelievable. It's a smile on it. No, I was like, he was like, that's not a good idea. <laughs> oh man. And this thing, this is crazy. This is my this is my shop truck, man. Yeah, I, mean, like I got paint in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I got painted fiber. <laughs> <laughs> the good stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, this is uh, this is my shop vehicle. Yeah, love it. It's my daily. I daily the hell out of this thing. Wow. That's awesome. All right, so let's sit down for an interview. Let's do an interview. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, the mic. Yeah. Ryan, you got to unmute. Okay, so yeah. basically, let's get into the first question. We always want well, to have both of you guys, and if you wants to join us, first question. Yeah, you got yeah. Let me get you lighting, dude. Yeah, yeah. So, or you could do. Sorry, I'm a sucker for. I hang around video guys sometimes. And yeah, they, they make teach it better. Me as much as I can. There we go. There we go. Okay, so that, uh, that was awesome. Yeah. That was amazing, right? What do you think, Duke? That was awesome. <laughs> okay. So the first question we always ask our guests is, uh, did you have shop class growing up? Absolutely. It's the only thing that kept me out of trouble in high school. Okay. Nice. Or got me into trouble. Nice. That kept me out. Like, honestly, it was cool. My favorite, my favorite shop I had was Metal Shop. Wow. So it started off uh, freshman year. We had something called Art Metal. Okay. So basically, you just kind of did some RC stuff. Okay. We had oxyacetylene torches um brazing was a big deal so we had brass rod we had copper rod and we would sit there and just braze pieces of nice. metal together a big wire wheel yeah I, I still remember my, my shop teacher mr weiler in orange Wind high school um guy was awesome he was he was so mean <laughs> to the idiots yeah yeah but he was like totally cool with us that yeah. were like i mean, it's your typical shop teacher just didn't right put up with bs and yeah all. yeah and uh, never forget the guy, Mr. Wilder. It was pretty cool. I actually enjoyed being there. He was kind of a hard ass in the beginning. The freshman year kind of sucked. But I started building. Um, so I, let the, me check this out. Duke, we're good? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I think when you start, you have to sort of be like a hard ass to all the kids at the beginning. Oh, yeah. No, totally. He, he kept just those kids in check. I mean, just no, to feel them out. Yeah. Yeah, the kids didn't mess around there. Like we knew if we pissed off Mr. Weiler, yeah, it was book work time. Like, <laughs> no one wanted to do book work. It was no, like, definitely. It's like, all right. He, at the end of every single shop class, he'd look up on the wall 
and everything was stenciled, all the tools. There was something missing. Yeah. It's like, all right, that wasn't missing last class. Yeah. Get your asses in here. And if someone messed up and some got lost the next time, yeah. Mid class, we knew it was book work, book work time. Wow. That means no, no fun, no yeah. grinding, no welding. It was just strictly open these dusty old books out. He was he was hardcore. He was super hardcore. <laughs> and, I mean, we, had, we had this big That's what you do in all your other classes. Book yeah, work, but you know, you, no one you came, to, wow. came to shop class, so you didn't have to cl you close the book, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was all hands on there stuff too. So first year was art metal, super fun because we kind of got the toy around and play. Uh -huh. And he he teach a set of bracings together, and then you know lay little beads on a piece of you know basically sixteen gauge metal. That's like a like a booger sheet. Just try. Yeah, to start. yeah. And yeah. it was like you're blowing holes through it half the time. And, right, right. But right. you're you, you wanted you to be creative. And so you're using it. a torch if you were brazing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oxy assembly. Nice. We weren't allowed to touch the Mig and Tigs at all. Oh wow. So like, like you know. Uh, sophomore, uh, junior, and senior year. It was like that was our hands off. You wow. couldn't touch them. No kidding. Um, and then TIG, they didn't really teach us much TIG because everyone knows TIG's kind of a pain. Yeah. And most yeah. of those kids didn't have patience for it. Yeah. You got to have patience and whatnot. So it was like arc welding was a big one. Um, and then once we did arc welding, then we moved on to MIG welding. Okay. Because he wanted to kind of teach us everything. And also, we had a machine shop there too. Oh, wow. So we had lathes and we had mills wow no it, kidding it was a pretty cool little setup a lot of stuff was armory surplus we had these giant press brakes and wow. really cool machines old bridge ports and um i remember that uh, you know kind of like i really got into the machining part because i was just uh, i was mesmerized by uh by billet obviously yeah and, yeah uh, yeah so i always loved doing billet stuff and that was kind of my favorite thing to do and uh one of the first things that we had to do i think it was in my sophomore years and that was that was like shop class because you got freshman year was your just toy mm -hmm. art metal then you got into um your second year was you could actually do machining right. so we'd make these little aluminum boxes that had to be to scale so we used oh. micrometers oh, we used okay calipers get you good getting the numbers and tolerances going absolutely and yeah. it had to be within this and then you know your, your grade was on your how you're finished and how your finished wow. passes were and how you stayed within the tolerances of what the actual blueprint said. Oh, ah, that's pretty good. Yeah, and then we moved on to lathes and we did wow, some turning. Wow, a lot. Oh, tons. Wow. So I, I, uh, I was really into RC airplanes at the time, uh -huh. and um, they had these little Cox motors. I don't know if you guys remember those little, you know, RC mm -hmm. two-stroke little Cox motors on 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 uh, RC airplanes, but um, yeah, like the nitro ones, right? nitro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're pretty easy. They're you yeah. know, a sleeve two cylinder right. or a single cylinder two-stroke. Um, very primitive carburetor on it. Yeah, it really yeah. Isn't, isn't much. There's like a little slide carburetor with right. a little hole inside of it. And I knew a lot about these motors. Mm -hmm. So I'd start making my own tuned pipes from them. Oh, Bigger cool. Pieces. Really? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, I'd make them sound different. And my <laughs> wow. shop teacher's like, all right, well, you're not really supposed to be doing that, but I, I'm digging it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did pretty well in art metal. And then he kind of gave me free reins in my sophomore year to kind of play around. I ended up building, like, taking, making engine parts. Wow, these little two-stroke oh, motors, shit. and he goes, "Well, That's basically, amazing. sophomore or my my junior year, he made me a foreman. You should gotta wait till senior." Oh yeah, and he's like, "Just don't piss me off, and make sure the shop's clean." And he gave me like my senior year and, and junior year basically free rents to do whatever I wanted. Wow, no kidding! Yeah, so I'd make all these little weird mushroom things on lathes. You were the shop special. I, That's what just, they call you. He just it was <laughs> fun. Like he just adopt. Yeah, you adopt the right people. Yeah, and I love it. I mean, I, I was so bad in like math and uh, computer class and all that stuff that I get in fights with my teachers. They're like, "All right, instead of sending you just, to the principal's just office, go down to the shop. Go to the shop class. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. hang out with Mr. Weiler. He's yeah. an asshole." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, right on. They so, think it's a punishment. Yeah, yeah and I was like, fuck. we also had uh, we also had a uh, what's it called a um, auto shop. Oh, really? So, yeah, we had auto, wood, wow. and metal shop. Most of the schools got rid of this stuff. That's they crazy. did. I what mean, town was this? This was Orange Glen High School in Escondido. Oh, wow. Now, I think they got rid of, I heard they got rid of like all the shop classes a couple wow. years afterwards, which God. is a pity because all yeah. three of them were in the same building. Uh huh. And we would just kind of float around. And once I took auto shop, I was like, we were making, we had this Camaro that we built for a drag racing. Yeah, and we got really? a, yeah. So we had a drag racing tomorrow. Wow. We had a Chevy 350 in it. Yeah, um, we took it down to our local raceway down here. We had the news come out, and we built the car from scratch. Holy shit! But we needed door panels. We needed instrument clusters. We needed a lot of sheet metal work. Ah, and I was the only one in there that was in shop class. Okay, a metal shop. So I'd go in and I'd make the dashboards. 
because we had like press breaks, we had nice. dimple dyes. So I, I I do all that stuff, dude. That's great. It was, like, it was great, dude. I didn't like, know about that. High school's fun. That's so funny. We've spoke. I don't remember all this. Yeah. Oh my god. So yeah, absolutely. I think shop was probably the, the best thing. So when I saw this revolt thing, I wasn't afraid to touch anything. Right. I was right. like, okay, yeah. And I, we got five access machine shop right next door. Oh wow, no that's kidding. It's insane. Wow. Like state of the art. Wow, so no kidding. Big time cool stuff. But yeah, I I, I wouldn't have gotten anywhere in this field. If I didn't have those as my root fundamentals, wow! Because I think, it. and I think you guys have tested when you learn something as a kid, it soaks in deep. Yeah, you know, trying to learn to do this now, yeah. uh, it's way it's harder. difficult. There's yeah. a lot to learn. Yeah, plus you got life ahead of you. Yeah, you know, you're busy. Yeah, I got three kids, two homes, wife. Yeah, another business. Yeah, clients. Right. Problems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wow. know, but we still. You know, have time to learn and do stuff. I mean, snow truck. You know, when you're just in. Yeah. I learned how to TIG weld on that car. Oh, cool. I've nice. had a TIG welder for about seven, eight years, seven years. My wife bought it when she was pregnant. Uh huh. Um, she was good at TIG weld, and she's a lot better at it than I was. Oh wow, no kidding. Oh, women have that touch. They're, they're amazing. I yeah. just taught this girl the other day. She she's like a junior, and I I showed her, and I was like, okay, this is gonna take a while. I'll be back. Just play around. I came back and she's making beads. And I was like, get out of here. Second time. Yeah. I was like, what is going on here? I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. My wife did the same thing. We went to Oshkosh, Wisconsin for a big air show. They have it every year. It's like 12,000 airplanes fly in. It's the biggest air show in the world. Yeah. Um, and then like Miller, Lincoln, uh, that set of workshops. I mean, there's probably a hundred workshops. Composite right. work. So she took some composite stuff. She took. Wow. Money. No yeah. kidding. Because she's like, I don't care about planes. Yeah. This is boring. But she wants to know how to do the welding. She water. likes to do like wow. planes and crafts. That's so awesome. So she actually bought that Miller Squareway 200 that I got for that Perfect. Lincoln Squareway. That's her welder. That's amazing. <laughs> so she was like on the side of the house. Yes. The girls are awesome at welding. Way better. And it's funny because the guidance counselors. They don't put the girls in, in the in the guy in the shop classes, mm -hmm. and it's weird because it's all women in the mostly women in the guidance department, and then they don't encourage the girls. So it's like wow, you know. So I have to go over there and say, listen, girls can do this, and there's a whole pathway for them. There's all these celebrities doing it. Jesse Combs paved the way in a way, and I and I and I, every year I have to encourage it. You know, yeah, it's I mean, wild. shop class is great. There's yeah. one girl in my whole apprenticeship intake, and on day one, the instructors I need all school guy i don't think there's anyone under the age of like 60 teaching there and yeah they said this yeah come Rihanna, closer she's how's the sound good ass. like this girl because she's got something to prove now oh yeah she's gonna kick your ass and sure enough she was everything that we had to do she was the wow. one leaving everyone else how to do it so let, let me ask you guys did you have shop class growing up snow I'm from Oklahoma. Okay. Of course. Is that a yes? <laughs> of course. We also had tractor class, class. Yeah. No, I had a oh, wood shop, and then, you know, we learned how to weld and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I've always had an old car, no matter yeah. what year it was. And I'm older than these guys. So right, right. I was in high school, you know, like back in the early 80s. Oh, okay. You look good, so, man. Yeah, well, I'm worried. <laughs> For 90s, not yeah. just like that. <laughs> but, yeah. So, we did a lot of that. And, you know, like I said, you know, we drive old cars, and you kind of have to have them mechanical aptitude to keep yeah. your old car on the yeah. road. Right. Nothing motivates you like not being able to get groceries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That makes yeah. you really do those late nights and, and figure out how to work on that car. Yeah. Yep. yeah. This guy yeah. this guy comes here, he works on you know motors, electronics, cars, and yeah. then he goes home. I'm like, what'd you do last night? Well, I worked on motors, my motorcycle, <laughs> I rebuilt this. Oh, my van, the entire wiring system was blasted. He comes in here with the dash ripped apart. Wow. And it's like, that's more complicated than any of the EVs we have here. Just to hit the <laughs> well, dash. Last night, I went home. I couldn't just sit and do nothing. So I was like, pour out half the AC stuff in it. I re the heat. I got heating now as of today. So oh, nice. yeah. I'm, 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 we're in business now. <laughs> weather's a motivator. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, I had a heater core issue in a, in a Ranger. Just and didn't, I didn't it. finish. Miserable. Didn't do it until. Yeah, that's so funny. I usually get done just by the time it's getting warm again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you you got your head right the curve. This yeah. <laughs> now you're from Wales. Did you have shop class in Wales? Yeah, yeah. We actually had two different shop classes. We had um, what were they called? Something something materials, which is what you call shop class. And then we had another one that was systems and control, which was like electronics. All shop right. Class. No auto shop though. Um, okay. It was just you know three months you do wood, three months you do uh, aluminium, three months you do you know. 
whatever like different yeah, materials. Aluminium. Well, aluminium. Aluminium's different. That's <laughs> not. It's it's not aluminum. It's I can't work on aluminum. I can't it's, work on it's, aluminum. It's it's the left handed version of mm. aluminum. <laughs> you got to use all this. The you got to use metric hats. Yeah, yeah and <laughs> and if the shears are left handed versus or right handed versus left handed yep. shears. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, this is Nick. He just joined. He's a shop yeah, teacher yeah. in uh, upstate New York. Uh, Hi guys. Cool. So, okay. So the next question is, uh, you know, how did you go from, okay, shop class to how'd you get, like, how'd you go? What's the, what's the story to get into here? Apprenticeship. Yeah. Military. Me, apprenticeship. Okay. Yeah, no totally. kidding. All right. Thank yeah. you. So, I mean, all the electric motor stuff, um, you know, back in the eighties, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with any military weapons, but every Navy ship has what's called a close in weapons system. Hmm. Sea winds. Okay. And that the actual term is called a phalanx. Huh. It's a 20 millimeter Gatlin gun just throws a wall of depleted uranium up there, right? At the tune of, you know, 4,000 rounds a minute. Well, it's a 4,000 pound gun mount and there's two electric motors. That oh. you, and so that's where I started with the electric motor, oh, no electronics kidding. radar. Wow, no kidding. So shot class, you know, kind of helped me develop the aptitude for that. So when I took the ASVAB, the military test, uh -huh. they were like, oh, this guy's good with, you know, machines in his hands. Yeah. And so I ended up going into advanced electronics. Wow. And then you did semiconductors afterwards. After and I spent out. 20 years in the semiconductor industry because I was trained in electronics in the military. Hmm. And then after that, I mean, I'm a disabled vet. And yeah. I used Thank my you military service. benefits. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Yeah. I used my military benefits to go to school and I got a degree in physics and a degree in kinesiology. And then, you know, I started training people and this is kind of like my, you know, yeah. hobby career. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. good. Wow, no kidding. And how did you get here? Me? Um, I drove. <laughs> <laughs> he drove the Tesla Mino. I drove the Tesla Mino. But you started in, comp you were in yeah, computers for a while, so, right? So uh, my, my, uh, my, I think it was junior year of college or high school, um, I took a, like a little, you know, one of my mom's friends like, hey, you know, uh, do you have, can you can come work with my husband? He just needs some work during the summer. Uh -huh. He has this little software gig. And I like computers. I was yeah. kind of geeking out. I enjoyed them. Um, I did a little summer time, like a little internship with them. But he paid me like minimum wage. Yeah. It's a couple extra bucks in my pocket. Sure. And uh, he handed me a laptop and he says, look, uh, here's, here's, a, here's a book. So it was, uh, back then it was like Access 97, um, back in the <laughs> 90s. And the book was like this thick. It was all about databases. And he goes, look, it was access databases. Yeah. <laughs> that was cool. And it was all VB, that, yeah. VBA. And it was before you were born. No, I, I, had, I had to use it. I got called 50 to that. Yeah, yeah. This, this is before your time. Um, so uh, what's it called? I, I ended up taking this book home. And I studied it for a couple months. Um, busted up his laptop. Started writing little software pieces, database entries, and you know, querying and this and that. And I, he comes back to me. He goes, so what do you think? I said, I think I could do this. And he asked me a bunch of questions. What'd you learn? And he goes, Hey, I'll start you off at minimum wage. And you could hang out here within a year. Um, I ended up quitting there and getting an entry level, like a mid level programming job at another place. Oh, wow. So in a year, I was able to absorb as much as I could out of this you know, little tiny hole in the wall yeah. software development guy right. in, his, in his own garage. He's basically writing code. Right. And he was right. We were writing code for Qualcomm, Hewlett Packard. Wow. Oh yeah, big stuff. No shit. So I was kind of like his little apprentice. Yeah. Learned a bunch of stuff. But I always had a knack for like mechanical stuff. Okay. I always wanted to build things. Like ever since I was a kid, I'd fix fix like my parents' clocks or rip their VCRs to pieces. I'd go work on carburetors, motorcycles, whatever it was, I had my fingers in it. Wow. Software was just one of those things. Like I want to be a doctor, but it was just too in school. School sucks. I hate it. Yeah. You know, it's just too much. So I don't blame you. it was just kind of an out of like, oh, well, software makes good money. Mm. I ended up starting my career and doing 25 years of software. I still run an operating software company, right. which is great because it couples into this. But I always had this itch that I needed to scratch okay. because I wanted to like my software was like, okay, we built all this cool software. Where is it? It's right there on the screen. Yeah, I just stop pick it up and hold it. Yeah, there's nothing tangible. Yeah, there's if I can't throw it across the room and I get annoyed at it, I'm not interested. Right, if I can't hit it with a hammer, I'm not interested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's you know, I did the software thing, yeah, and then, you know, we met years ago when I was playing around with the CV stuff. But oh, yeah. I, I did like electric uh, skateboards before that, electric bikes before that. Nice, wow. and then I'm always, you know, I'm a businessman too, so I'm always looking at business opportunities. Mm -hmm. And this EV market kind of hit at the right time. Yeah, it's like okay, it's huge. Here's now. here's EVs. I know a lot about the stuff, and I have the software background too. Yeah, let's put it all together, and that's how Revolt kind of started. 
cool. is, is through that idea of, and now I love doing it because that's what I get to design. I yeah. do these <clears throat> motors and, and fun little systems and enjoy enjoy actually something at the other end. I built my own 3D printers, you know, and, and learned uh, Fusion 360. Mm -hmm. And it was really easy for me to, to get into a CAD program because it was the, the logic behind it was exactly like programming. Oh, okay. And when I got into building assemblies and sub-assemblies in CAD, I did it exactly the way I did functions and subroutines for 25 years. There right. was no difference. Wow. So right. I, I think I got a really big head start because even if you open up any one of my CAD files, everything's documented, mm. everything's named correctly. Because I got that beaten into me when I was really young by yeah. my first boss. Right. And I was able to apply that across the board. So wow. it's, it was kind of like a sidestep versus like, oh, I got to learn all this computer stuff to do this. That's interesting. Cool. Uh, this is uh, Matt. He just joined. Uh, Matt's a shop teacher in uh, Taylorville, Illinois. And uh, right. yeah. And what he does is, believe it or not, they don't have a shop class, they have a location. Uh, the school buys a piece of land and then they build a house every single year. So the shop class is at the job site. That's, That's way cool. cooler than a shop class. Yeah, I know. Construction I, know. Right. There you go. I know. But it's like real. Yeah. It's amazing. Real world applications. You're right making there. real men out here, out here in California. We just uh, give everybody a blanket and tell them to cry. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing. So yeah, so they built that. They're building a house, and then because of that, um, it, people got excited. All the people in the industry. So now they're doing a lot of energy efficiency and whatnot. So they got like um, they got a, a, a stud instead. Like cool stuff comes up. Like instead of a stud where it carries all of the energy through, they got a stud that has then a break in it and another stud. And then it's a truss in between. So now there's no energy or less energy transfer, mm -hmm. and it's called a, a it's called a thermal break. So there's it makes all the sense. Yeah, yeah. So there's cool stuff that comes up, and he's doing all kinds of new stuff with low voltage and whatnot. So the industry's like helping them now. I'm glad they're going back to low voltage. I mean, why the hell would you wire a house with all that high voltage? That's stuff? true, right? LED for appliances. Yeah, too. LEDs everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Is that the switch? It's a it's a sib. It's what I had to um, I had to put a new strip in our what our our exterior uh, light sconces, and then this is what okay. it clicks into okay. the five clicks into to make the light work. And I just happen to have one here. Put, <laughs> put it on the screen. Looks like it has a USB or something. That's wild. Like, so, it's got a board. Yeah. Wow. And is it all Cat5 cable that you use throughout the house? Yep. The whole house, the whole, all the house is uh, lighting and uh, ceiling fans all run off a 120 amp breaker. And the rest of it goes into a low voltage box. And we got, I don't know how many. Crazy. It's a small How, how many yeah, different crazy. runs of uh, Cat5 going out. But yeah, it all runs off. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. He's gonna be a lot less power and a lot more efficient. So yeah, get all the heat off of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I think they say a light bulb uses it was like maybe ten percent efficient. Well, like all the rest of is heat. Well, I remember the old light bulbs in my house were one hundred and twenty yep. watt light bulb. And now, like my the same LED is like seven watts. Jeez, that's a big difference. And the lights identical. Yeah, the warm maybe lights right off. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're softer. Yeah. Or not, they're, they're warmer now. These get that really, really bright light. Yeah, now, yeah. now the filament looks real. It, you know, we just got there. LEDs in the in a workshop at the school, and like now I can see it was all yellow from the from the old uh, fluorescence. Oh, it's terrible! Yeah. You can actually see now. <laughs> I gotta wear a hat because it's like coming down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my garage. Yeah, yeah. the new garage. Yeah. I think the lighting is right for the guys. Right? Like, well, oh, yeah. What kind of apprenticeships did you do uh, coming out of this? I was really lucky. I was on the telltale end of an apprenticeship scheme. It was a four-year apprenticeship that you could get into at 16. So wow. I went to school at 16, straight into, I mean, commuting two hours each way to get there, but it was it was well worth it. Um, you do six weeks at the school yeah. and then six weeks on the job at the company who's sponsoring you. So it was oh, that's airways. great. Nice. So you spend six weeks and they, they say, okay, here's what you're going to do. Find some radar equipment there to work on. Find some this, find some that. And you've got this whole thick book to go through of all the stuff you have to work on. Right. And then you go back and for six weeks at your job site, you do that stuff. Wow. And then you come back and you go, okay, you write up your reports, you get good at documenting, you learn the fundamentals. 
there's machine shop, there's electronic shop, there was um, you know, wiring house, some house wire, all the big conduit stuff too, and, and uh, consumer units, breakers. So it was a really good That's general great. overview. But four year apprenticeships, you don't hear about those anymore. And is that after school, after high school? Yeah. So okay. we got the choice over there to you can either leave school at 16 or 18. Yeah. So I left at 16. And I'm gonna oh, see, <laughs> that's the other thing is that over here they expect you to go to 18, but they don't even give you a choice. Like at 16, you're kind of done over there unless you decide to go forward, right? Yeah, I have about half the people stay on. Half. Yeah. But you gotta stay here. It's a hundred percent people stay, and and usually you my can drop out though, right? Or is that you gotta understand? Then you're a dropout. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's nonsense. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. That's perfect. You know, here's the thing. I get in trouble a lot because I suggest it to students who, um, who uh, like, let's say they're struggling and they're not enjoying themselves. And I say to them, hey, listen, not for nothing, but why don't you get your GED? And they always say to me, oh, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. You know, because I'm like, why? Because you think it's a bad thing, right? And I ask them, where did the GED come from? And they don't know. They think it's just for losers or something like that. It's actually from the military. And what happened was people would, they would want to sign up for World War II and they wanted to sign up and they signed up and then when they come back they're 25 and they're like battle ridden. They're not going back to high school. No. So 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 the the government had to come up with something and they're like, okay, we'll give, we'll give you this test and you're free. You got a degree, a diploma and you're good. And so it was created for uh, ex-military and they opened up for everybody, you know? So it's just too bad that there's such a stigma because I probably I didn't have shop class. Growing my brother up. got his GED. We both quit school the same day. I went and got my adult ed continuation. Yeah, I got my diploma, but um, yeah, no, you guys have to go dark. We'll make our excuse. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah no, no problem. <laughs> no, no worries. Oh, that truck you saw earlier doesn't have a tail. Yeah, talking to you. Yeah, so yeah. Um, we're gonna go. We gotta move some vehicles around. Okay, and uh, no hey, well, hopefully we'll see oh. you when you get back out here again. Okay, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Alrighty. Great ride. Back because you've got no tail lights. Oh <laughs> my God. Okay. <laughs> All right. See you all around. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Have a seat if you want. Yeah. Hell oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. All right. Wow. That was good. We got three interviews in one. There you go. That was pretty good. Uh. So yeah. So uh, those are some badass boys behind me. Those guys are fun. I mean, even the Welshman. I mean, he's he's younger cat. But yeah, what's his deal? He, you said he has world records? Yeah, he's got two Bonneville records. This name. Wow, no kidding. He did both of them on, on uh, one of my halters. No um, way. Yeah, he entered two different classes. And wow. Bumped the record up quite a bit. Oh, my God. He could go, he could have gone faster, but he had a limitation on tires. Oh. They only were rated to a certain speed. Uh, yeah, and they'll come apart. They couldn't quite figure out. Like, uh, uh, they're all like, as long as your tires are rated to go... So let's just say the record's at 100 miles now. Okay. And your your tires are rated to like 110. Yeah. You could go 125, 130 because the tires are rated over what the current record is. Okay. Everyone agreed with that except for one official. Uh oh. He's like, no, you can't go over 115 because that's what they're rated at. That's, I think that's it. And everyone's like, no, that's not the way it works. He didn't want to get DQ. Yeah. Oh, so right. he, he went up to like 127. He goes, oh, shh. Good. Backed yeah. off the throttle, yeah, and got back down to like 115, 116, which is not. But on that kind of bike, that's yeah. moving. Yeah, is that the the off road Alta bike? Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> you've those out there. Yeah, yeah, we're doing. He was in buck fit. He actually got up to like 120. Oh my god, no way. Yeah. Uh, dude, can you pull that stuff up? There's, you could probably where. Yeah, yeah. How? Uh, what's the fastest rated tires you can get? Um, we have some, um, actually right up there. Um, we have some, be uh, no, I'm sorry. Mickey Thompson, I think MTs just made us a, a Bonneville tire and they are tested on their machines or whatever or rated to 500. Yeah. What? Oh my God. What do they feel like? They feel hard. Believe it or not, they're, they're really thin. Huh. Um, I mean, yeah, they're hard because we pump them up to 90 some PSI. Yeah, wow. Like 100 PSI, basically. Yeah. And uh, we fill them with nitrogen, but they're they're slick. There's almost no rubber on them. They last, in our car, they last two runs, so 10 miles. They're okay. trash. Wow. And in a turbinator, they last one run. In the, in the what? Turbinator. Turbinator? Yeah. What's that? That's that uh, jet, jet car that we have. 
You have a jet car? Yeah. What? So we have, the, <laughs> well, it's not mine. It's Team Vesco. So we, we were, we're associated and affiliated with Team Vesco. Team uh, Vesco. The yellow car. Yeah. Team Vesco is yeah, the, the yellow car. Yeah. And they, that's the one they, they basically gave us to put the electric motors in. Wow. And then they also have another car. That one's been around since 1957. That's amazing. The thing's just got so much pedigree. It's, it's dialed in. It's awesome. It, it, it's like cruise control at 350 miles an hour. Do you have uh, Duke Team Vesco? Uh, maybe you could pull that up for us. All right. You want to look at the. Uh... Type in Turbinator 2. Not Terminator 2, but Turbinator 2. So this is the fastest land. So that's the fastest electric car on the planet. Yeah. The one wow. Out there. How, how fast is that? That was 300. We did 353.8. 350 our top speed was almost 360 but you know how they average it out yeah yeah so we did 359 point like eight seven so we were like just shy of 360. oh my god that's insane kind of top speed and i only had it dialed in about 60 percent power and which class is that because i know E3. there was like oh okay like the big one the big one so yeah. that's over two thousand pounds or, okay two thousand kilos and how how much does that thing weigh it weighs 3800 pounds dude that's amazing it's actually not that heavy no we wow. picked up a little bit weight. It used to weigh like 34, I believe, when it had an ICE engine in it. Yeah. So it picked up about 400 pounds. Can, can you tell us how, what kind of batteries you use? Yeah, we used uh, the first run we tried. We did a P100 D-Pack out of a Tesla. Okay. It didn't work very well. Mm. You know, it only got us to like 295 huh. and it just would not give us the amperage that we needed. Right. And we ended up almost cooking that battery. Oh, geez. We yeah. run two large drive units on it. Yeah. But we weren't even wide open on them. We were like running about 50%. And then what we ended up doing is we rebuilt. Um, oh, here you go. Yeah, we rebuilt the whole entire battery pack. We came back in a month with Honda Insight prismatic cells. Wow. Yeah, I was testing them a month. They're actually that's them right there. Hmm. Um, I have. I'll, I'll show you a cell. Yeah, let me. Let me grab. Okay. This is wild. All right, where are we going, Ron? What's that? Where are we going? Right here? Uh, Team Vesco Turbinator. Yeah, hit it. 503 miles an hour. That's with, and that's with. Uh, you can be confident, confident choosing, choosing farmers, farmers insurance. insurance. There's no, There's no need, need to, need to, to knock, knock, on knock on wood. wood. Bum, 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 bum. You're crazy. You're crazy. You know that? You know that? This crazy, this crazy for, you. for you. And this and delicious. This delicious. Red Baron Pizza. Terminator, Terminator out of Rockville, Rock Rock Utah, Utah, owned, owned by, owned by Rick, Rick Vesco. Vesco. This, is this is the fastest, fastest wheel-driven wheel driven vehicle, vehicle in, the world, in the world, ladies and gentlemen. Powered by a Lycoming T55 turbine, turbine engine out of, out of, a, a, out of helicopter. a helicopter. So, Duke, you got a class T3, T3 turbine 3 class. Current record. Established at World of Speed last month at 482.646. Wow. And now uh, go and they uh, are wide for 500 uh, miles per uh, hour. Go on to the right. Watch James the Spangler is the driving the driver with Eric wow. Ritter as the alternate driver. Owned by Rick Vesco, who is the crew chief. Wow. No way. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh. Be underway. Be underway. Got a mile. Oh, Okay, wow. heads up, everybody. This is a Rick Vesco car, and they are shooting for 500 miles per hour with this vehicle. Whoa! Oh my god! Vesco Terminator, Dave Spangler, on course now. You can see him way back. Oh there. yeah, look at that in the background. Wow, he's flying. Three seventy three point five three eight. Three seventy three. Three seventy three. Oh my God. Four hundred point two eight three. Oh my God. Four hundred sixty nine point six seven one. 
don't believe all that. Okay, well they got their exit oh, speed of five zero three point three three two. Boy, the, that is incredible. We are just uh, gas here. Beat speed him. Yeah, and that hasn't gone over no. five. Huh? They they actually had a competition first to five hundred. Yeah. And they won. No kidding. Yeah, they had the fastest wheel driven, and that's four wheel drive. Really? Yes, yeah, it's, it's full. Wait, and it's not pistons. No, it's, it's turbo. A, it's a it's a jet engine out of a like Chinook. A, like a helicopter. A helicopter. It has five and a half thousand horsepower. <laughs> Everything in that car was hand built, including the drivetrain, tra transmission, gearbox. Wow. The guy that built the gearbox is no longer with us. Oh no. <laughs> it's like who's going to rebuild this if it breaks? Uh, Nobody. Yeah. yeah it's, wow. Dude, it's gnarly. David Spangler. Uh, he is the. Um, he used to own hooker headers with gary hooker right so he gary hooker is more the the shop craftsman guy yeah and david spangler was the business side of things okay so they had a partnership they're still partners still today in different yeah. business endeavors they sold it to holly carburetors oh, years wow. ago wow like holly they buy up everybody uh, uh it's just uh yeah it's it's a big thing holly yeah. loves to buy companies but it's so cool that like here we are talking about evs but we're in the racing space and we're doing it at, for speed and whatnot i love that yeah no i mean this is the fastest team on the planet period hands down wow the yellow car behind me the little giant yeah that thing holds so many records on the salt could, could we pull uh do can you pull up <laughs> team besco yeah, yeah, yeah. how uh how far do you have to travel to go 500 miles an hour? That's five miles. Five miles? Five mile drag strip, and he doesn't like a minute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Dude, he, he, was, he was at like a quarter mile like that. Yeah, he was the, he was doing a quarter in like 10 seconds. How's that for delivery? You need right, what, are we, what are we looking up, Brian? Uh, Team Vesco. You go, yeah, you go to teamvesco.com. Yeah. Vesco. V E S C O. They are the first one, I believe. Usually, I do the I pull up stuff, but he yeah, the team Vesco race in the first link. All right, hit it. That's it right there. <clears throat> and uh, uh, there it is, right? Yeah. So the four four four. That's the first. That's our car that we have here. That number four 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 EV. It's called the Little Giant. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's us. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's our driver. There's me standing next to him. Wow. That's down at Bonneville. So that car started out with a Model B motor in it. Model B? Ford Model B in 1950. Oh, really? They had no v back then. <laughs> right? Right, okay. So it started off the, uh, with the uh, Ford Model B. Wow. Um, it, the car has gotten a lot of transplants. Mm. over its you know history on the salt right um it was originally you know the team vesco has been around since 1930 1933. Um, don vesco helped uh, build this car too that was uh, rick's brother um and they kind of put all the stuff together and it went through many many reiterations there's an original ford bottle b motor that oh was my again. god that's amazing uh, i mean the ultimate hot rod right and back then it was smashing records um and uh, that's john vesco so that's that's their dad Wow. Uh, and then Don and uh, Duke, Rick. Uh, zoom in. Use the – on the right-hand side of your screen, you should be able to – yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's that's John Vesco. Um, he was the original guy that basically did all this. That's 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 Rick and Don's dad. Ah, that's cool. Um, man. Don did a lot of motorcycle stuff. So did Rick. They had a hot rod shop here – or a motorcycle shop here in El Cajon, Santee. Wow. Um, kind of their claim to fame was racing and, and motorcycles. And, and then, do they win on Sunday and sell on Monday? What absolutely. Where they sell? That's motorcycles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was the original. <laughs> that was what it originally looked like. Oh, wow. Look at that. So it's 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 come a long way. It's been yeah. rebuilt a few times. Yeah. But, you know, the overall design is is that's the concept where it came from. It's, you know, that they were one of the first guys to narrow it up so much. Wow. Um, they, they took a lot of time trying to figure out aerodynamics because you can't have any positive or negative force on these cars mm. if you have too much downforce you're losing power right if you have drag the opposite problem is well you turn into an airplane 
Mm. And uh, that's not what anyone wants. So right. yeah, they had Besco Body Shop back then. So it's a oh, long, wow. Look at that. Looks long so cool. lineage of, of, you know, racing since 1933. So um, I get to work with these guys. We're, we're on speed dial. I actually just talked to Rick yesterday. Nice. Um, actually, uh, uh, David Spengler from Turbinator called me yesterday. Uh, I got my truck stolen. So he was like, oh. Dude, I heard. I'm so sorry. Yeah, that was, that's nuts. <clears throat> had two of these motors sitting in the back of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah, we uh, we love working with these guys. They're like the coolest dudes in the world. They're not like these the macho dudes. They're just like, hey, they're tinkers. Yeah. They sit in their shop all day. Yeah. Rick sits in his, he's got this garage and it's like probably three times wider than this. Mm -hmm. And about as long as my door. So yeah. It's like three of these bays. Right. He's out in Utah by Zion. And all he does is sit in his shop and tinkers with this stuff. Nice. And he builds the coolest shit. Wow. No, pardon my speech. No, uh, it's all good. Um, it's shop class. Yeah, but I, you know, <laughs> they just build the coolest stuff in the world. Wow. Um, and none of these guys are like engineers. And, uh -huh. and, and, and they're just, they're better than engineers. Yeah. They're, they're, they're doing it. They're awesome. They're so smart. They know everything about suspension. And mm. I mean, we got out there in the car the first time we drove. It's like, oh, it's pulling to the right. I'm like, oh, great. What do we what do we, do we tweak? How do we mess this up? He goes, oh, don't worry, Eddie. I'm going to adjust it with suspension. I'm like, what? <laughs> a couple of cranks on this side. They put it on scales. Uh -huh. And they, they, they shifted the weight of the car around wow. by just cranking down one of the four coilover springs. Wow. No kidding. Yeah. And they got the thing to balance out. Uh -huh. Just with the two rear coilover springs. Oh, my God. And uh, once it was balanced out, they're like, okay, here we go. Let's try it again. Ran it. Driver was like, yeah, it's it's dead straight now. Wow. It's like, uh, we're all standing in the pits going, we're so glad these guys are here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> and, you know, you're out there. Like, oh, oh, yeah. When I was the first time. A lot of things can go wrong. Sure. And then this is a whole different level. This yeah. is like, you know, we were out there going. Because you're pushing so much air. So much more. And there's so many forces and heat and everything that anything could happen. Yeah. And, I'm, and then we're on a microscope because. Oh, yeah. Know, that's kind of what it looks like. That's it. Like now. That's yeah. the final version. Yeah. So I think in 2006, he got a revolt. If you go to his, can you pull his Instagram up, uh, revolt? Because I think he's got some uh, modern photos of that. Um, yeah, so uh, like I, I was lucky enough to get out there uh, and meet you. Th that was cool. Yeah, you drove out with me. Yeah, know? we had we a good... just we met like that night. I know. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's is... go. I told my wife like, "Hey, there's this guy staying in our RV." She goes, like, "Who is he?" I'm like, "Um, I don't know. I have no idea." <laughs> it was kind of just dropped off. Here. I can't believe is that two years ago or more? That was a little over two years ago. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we uh 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 I yeah and actually I helped you like assemble something. And then I, because I met the you first really iteration yeah. of this, and you sketch this on the salt with a pencil. Yes, you're sitting there like under umbrella, <laughs> pour, like, hottest, hottest, hottest fish grease. I loved it, and you're just like sitting there drawing my motor. I'm like, yeah. cool, and just, here we are. This is what it became. It's unbelievable. Oh, I remember all these details. Yeah. That's great, man. Oh, this wasn't even here. I designed all this afterwards. This is new, and this is new, right? This is. Yeah. I remember that, but uh, you just polished it. So keep your grubby fingers. Oh up. yeah, Matt will kill you. Oh jeez. I'm just kidding. No, no, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so if you scroll down, oh, 444, right there, uh, Duke. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, man. So there it is. Uh, but probably if you scroll down, you'll get some photos and stuff. The Hillbilly, the Hillbilly Deluxe. Yeah, that's the one you yeah. just wrote in. That was crazy. Wasn't that gnarly? I can't believe how fast that thing was going. And and it's a pickup truck. I was doing 103. We, and you guys had about five, <laughs> ten car lengths on me. And I'm in a Tesla. So, and I was like, I saw I was like, he didn't have his belt on. I'm like, ah, man, we're not gonna go that fast. Yeah, you are. That's oh my god. Why they're that's why they're caged in a four point in there. So okay. I was tell you guys. I am putting whenever I see Whenever I see motors from Revolt now, Revolt, be careful. I am putting the seatbelts on. Yeah, <laughs> we mean business. I grab the bar. I'm like, yeah, it's not gonna do anything anyway. <laughs> and then, and then you got stuffed in the back of your seat for a very long shot. Yeah. Oh my god. Cool. And uh, what's what's nice is I I've seen you uh, bring this over to uh, 
uh, shop class. That's actually Madison High School right there. That's the shop class. My buddy Omar Sevilla is a shop teacher there. Mm -hmm. a really super cool friend of mine. We actually grew up together. Oh, no way. Yeah, we um, we knew each other through high school. Wow, that's yeah, crazy. So um, he became a shop teacher and, I, you know, we kind of went our separate ways, kind of linked up later in life. Right. And uh, he ended up living kind of where I just built my new home. Oh, nice. And uh, when I came back from Bonneville, he's like, yeah, it's pretty cool what you're doing. And, you know, we're friends. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, are the kids interested in seeing this thing? He goes, are they interested in seeing it? Of course. I'm yeah. like, well, let me bring it by and we get, a, get it rebuilt and I don't have anywhere to put it. Mm. So Greg Quirin. Yeah, he's cool. Greg, we had on the show. Yeah, Greg and I were sitting at the reward ceremony for when we did the, did the um, did this car. Mm -hmm. And Greg turns around and goes, dude, the thing's so cool. Congratulations. It's so neat. I'm like, oh, dude, it came back. It has no motors in it. Everything got ripped out. It was supposed to go back to a Model B motor mm. because they want to do a tribute to their to their father. Oh yeah, and have the grandson drive it with the oh, old original cool. engine, nice. which is really cool. Yeah, but I'm cool. like, I don't have room for it. He's talking about this thing doesn't yeah. fit. No, yeah, and it's a real pain in the butt here being here in the shop. I can't have it here. Right, it's right. going back to a high school this week. Oh wow, no way. Yeah, another high school. That's great. So I, I just, I'm, I was like, no, I can't have this here. And Greg was sitting right next to me, and Greg's like, well, I could find room for it. Huh. I'm like where? He goes. Well, you know, we'd have to talk to the shop teacher, um, but I think I could put it in Madison High School. And uh, what, but what like Madison? But what, what is that's in San Diego? Yeah, but, San Diego. But what town is that? What, it's like, in um, that's in like I was over Claremont there. Back here. What is it? In Claremont. Claremont. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like inland from La Jolla. Okay. So gotcha. it's in that area. Um, okay. So he's like, oh, I got to clear it with shop teacher first, and I'm like. Where's it? Where, where, I'm all, what, 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 what high school? He goes, Oh, from James Manor High School. I'm like, Who's the shop teacher? He goes, Oh, his name's Omar Sevilla. I'm like, Don't worry. I'll call Omar. Yeah. He goes, He kind of gives me this weird look like, What do you mean you call Omar? I'm like, Already dialed his number. Yeah. I'm like, I've known Omar since I was a kid. I'm like, Wow. I'm all, I'll get that car in there. I'm like, Hey, Omar. And he's like, Hey, Eddie, what's going on? I'm like, Hey, so I got to see. He's like, Yes, bring it down. <laughs> so it was really cool with the kids because. The car was stripped. Oh, no, perfect. No motors in there. So I brought the car to, to James Madison. Mm -hmm. um, I went through it with Omar and we used, we went from tip to tail on the car. Mm. I said, look, the motors need to be gone through. Mm. They just got done racing at, you know, 350 plus miles an hour. Yeah. 60 miles an hour. And there's two Tesla motors. Two Tesla there. motors and they're belt driven together. So I had four wow. months to put this together. Oh my God. So what's from, the size of that belt? It's a six inch blower belt from Gates. Oh, carbon reinforced. Awesome. Yeah, it's this wide. Wow. It's massive. Yeah. It looks like a WWF. Gates wrestling. is ridiculous. Yeah. So they helped us out quite a bit. So um, when we picked up the car from. What does it look like? A WWF? Yeah, WWF belt. It's like this giant, like just. We got a giant. guy, Mark Willie, would appreciate that. Where's Mark tonight? Someone text him. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we got, it was at the high school last year. Um, the kids got the, the motors back in. Oh, they wow. got to rebuild the bearings on the uh, the drive pulley system that we built with the big belt drive. Yeah. Um, Was there damage? Zero. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah, we, we have eight runs on that motor. Shut up. Which in Bonneville means no way. Yeah. You, you literally blow, blow up an engine almost every single run. Wow, the reliability is way up. Way up. Oh, my we God. We had no issues with them. And we had some cooling issues in the beginning because some hoses were kinked. Oh, we had no idea our flow rate was garbage. We built uh, that car so fast that we didn't right. with some hose that was underneath the belly pan. That was like, we how do you it. cool it with? Uh, did you cool 48? Just okay. the, the standard coolant that goes in it. Okay, but did you use uh, like an ice water bath or yeah, something? Yeah, we, ch we chilled it like we did the year before. Okay. I just came up with a better system to do it. Okay, because I don't like putting water in these motors. Yeah, water in these motors is the worst thing you can do to them oh. because what happens, the rear seal is actually. Um, it's sleeved in um, the actual shaft itself for the rotor. Yeah, sits inside of the seal, and the shaft um, is cooled from from like there's a long pipe that goes inside the spinning rotor huh. to cool the actual induction rotor, mm. and that goes in and comes back out. Yeah, and there's a sleeve there that sits on the rotor that spins up to sixteen thousand RPM. That okay. sleeve is made out of like I believe it's like a, some sort of weird. Someone told me like a Deleron or something, but it, it's not its not a very good design by Tesla. It's, it's actually a piece of junk. Okay. All those seals will eventually leak. Mm. We're starting to see way more Teslas come in flooded, flood damage mm. from the inside. Mm. Um, unless you use their coolant, 
Mm. That their coolant has a, some sort of lubricated properties to it, so it helps uh, that seal kind of get lubed. Mm -hmm. So when people dump water into those things, like we yeah. did the first year, right? Worst thing you do to them because uh, that starts corroding, uh, and then you got all like electro electrolysis going on as well. Mm -hmm. So you'll start pitting that shaft. Oh yeah, the water will go through the shaft. It'll go through the motor, and eventually it goes down the inverter and fries the entire electronics. Wow, no and kidding. a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, and I'm just like sitting there watching people dump up water in these things, going, yeah not a good idea right so we use g40a which is the recommended coolant for them um, and what we did is we took uh, any beer drinkers here in our house oh yeah yeah okay yeah these so guys, yeah. everyone knows <laughs> about the, the jockey boxes and how they work mm -hmm. the big spools inside you get the keg on the side and you just got a bunch of ice in there yeah well our jockey box is up there huh we did the same thing we did they actually built the jockey box wait what's the jockey box so it's basically a cooler with a bunch of coils inside of it oh and the beer goes in one side and it comes out the spout on the end. Oh, oh no kidding. It goes through all that ice water. Okay, yeah. We built that with a closed loop system <laughs> that just circulates the coolant within the car. So when we're, before we go run it, we just chill it down a little bit. Nice. So we don't go crazy, but we just bring down a couple, oh, of, yeah. you know, just to get it, the water cool, like kind of like what we did the first year. Because unlike IC engines, we don't want to warm these up. Yeah. We want to keep them as cold as possible. Right, okay. So. Uh, we always do a pre-chill on them. Um, these Tesla motors are kind of notorious for, for not wicking heat away quickly. Mm. And their duty cycle is kind of trash. You know, I got, a, I got a crazy question. What, is it possible to use the specs and, and kind of custom build or have a company make those? Or is it still worth it to just use the uh, Tesla architecture? Like, uh, I, not just the architecture, but their actual motor. We're already doing it. Okay, I figured. <laughs> dude. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we have our own yeah. we have our own inverter coming up too. Ah, oh, dude. And it's in the megawatt water range. Really? 1 .1. Oh my god. Okay, guys, this is this is serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically what he's saying is uh, uh he might be able to supply people with like a powerhouse instead of using the Tesla. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen what we have here behind yeah, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pull it up. Uh actually you can see it you can see it on um uh, on his uh, Instagram, but I will a little revolver right here. It's yeah, on a, it's on a lazy Susan. Yeah, let me just join it. Oh, so cool. what we do is we, you know, Tesla motor by default is a transaxle. Um, so what we do is we spin, we basically machine down everything Tesla and get rid of it, and we use the core of the rotor and stator. Um, you know, I'll do a quick little walk around. Yeah, let's do it. You do flip, flip your camera. Yeah, I did it. And uh, Duke, can you not share the screen? Because we're going to make this the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. No, it's flipped the wrong way. Okay, how's that? Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so basically what we start with is... Oh, you know what? I got it. Hey, Ron, you got to mute, mute the other thing and... Yep, yep, I got you. I'm going to mute this one. Let's see. And I'm going to mute here, unmute here, and unmute there. How's that, guys? Yep, you got her. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, how's that? That's good, got right? Good, yeah, good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now that you know, uh, these guys are like wood shop workers and they've got uh okay so let's go look at it that's okay so this is a standard Tesla motor out of the model S. okay so what we have is the motor and stator in here that's the rotating mass over here's the inverter that actually takes dc power and inverts it into AC. now i will point out even though it looks like a tube that's just the cover yeah it's underneath cover. there is uh three inverters right that's three phase single inverter yeah. oh okay that's so three phase gotcha and then this is the motor side and then the gearbox is in here we have a differential then we have two uh this is for the hat shafts so the axles pop out here right. and drive the rear motor so that there's one on each side and so there's one, no transmission this is just a reduction there's a reduction box with a with a with a, a differential with a definite and yeah uh, so you have two sides we have the the wheels on both ends and there's half shafts that come out and okay so that's really tough to get into a hot rod. We could basically destroy the whole car, rip up the rear ends, 
do all that fun stuff to make it work. Wait, let me just put this in perspective for a second. Just imagine this is sitting underneath the rear trunk of like a Tesla. It's like in the ass. It's like right there where you're not expecting a motor to be there. So it's small unit, but it's powerful, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what we do is we, um, we machine them down. Um, so basically, this is what we do to them after um, our machining process is we remove the entire um, assembly, all the gearboxes, the gears, all that's been removed. Mm -hmm. You see the machine scuff marks here from when we went, went in with a mill mm -hmm. and removed this part. So now it's just a, basically a, a straight cylinder. Once that cylinder's um, taken apart, we clean it. Mm -hmm. um, those are the three phase leads for um, each phase in the motor. So there's wires that eventually go into that. Yeah. And then here's the shaft. Right. So this is the rotating shaft. You can see so this is around. the motor. This is the motor. Yep. And there was the trans the transaction was here. Correct. And then the inverter was here. Correct. Okay. So now we spin that 90 degrees and we put all our parts on. It. So this is the motor itself. Oh yeah. Okay. We dress it up with billet to clean it and basically get oh, it out of all the elements. That's all, man. Um, back here is a, uh, a torque. Oh, nice, nice signage, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a torque box. So it's a two to one, basically, or 1.9 to one reduction. Mm -hmm. So we have, we built all the internal parts to basically couple a Tesla motor into this torque box. This is a planetary torque box. Oh, okay. So it's basically a torque multiplier. It takes 450 foot pounds of put a uh, pound feet of torque uh -huh. and it multiplies that by basically 1.9. Yeah. So we're spitting over 900 ish foot pounds out of the yoke. Wow. And, uh, a slip yoke goes onto the end here. This is like where the back of the transmission would have been. And this is a slip yoke. Yep. And that goes in there this, and that spins around. And this would go to your, uh, u universal joint to your axle. Correct. Yeah. yeah. To the, yeah. To the actual, uh, yeah, to the drive on. Mm -hmm. So that's the, this is one that we just built for a customer. It's ready to go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna box it up tomorrow and ship it out. Oh wow, nice. So this is a real running unit. And then up around oh, the front, that's the, the gun. Oh look, we got yeah. this. Yeah. So that's good for what, 1500, 2000 horsepower, something yeah, like that. Oh my god. And that that's where that yoke goes on right there. So that's basically at the back there. Yep, that's what pokes out. There. And then this is where this is the input side here. Yes. Very cool. Planetary, in other words, they are rotating around the sun in the yep. middle. Yeah, that's yeah. why they call it planetary. Yeah. So that's all that um, up front. So basically, we call this section here our main mount. Um, this part I designed to do about you know four to five different things. So basically, uh, we have our coolant ports that come into it. We have a coolant in, coolant out on the other side, and then we have another coolant out back here. Mm. So. This branches into three parts of the motor and inverter. So this cools the water jacket that is basically protecting the motor and wicking away heat mm -hmm. that comes out here. The other side goes through the inverter underneath underneath all this beautiful billet work mm -hmm. is the three phase inverter. Mm -hmm. And that also is liquid cooled. Right. So that's the brains behind this and the power system to actually control the motor. It's just speed control. Basically. Okay. Like an old RC car. Yeah. You get your motor. Then you had the speed controller and the yeah. battery. Right. This is the speed controller. Got it. And, then, and is it the same Tesla inverters? The, yes. Okay. And then we modify them with software changes. Oh, okay. And we also do put different motherboards on them. Oh, okay. So we do, we have the ability to modify not only the software, but the actual hardware of it. Well, I mean, and, it's actually hard on them, yeah. Whoa, so what's this? I didn't want to see that. So this is kind That's of the, that main mount. Yeah. This hangs the motor and it hangs the inverter. This is the kind of part of it. Damn, look really at this. Nice piece of machine. Yeah. Wow. That is serious, man. The logo. Wow. <laughs> so the, a lot going this on. is your inlet and outlet for your uh, inverter. inverter right here. And then we have an adapter plate that Big adapts manifold. the inverter to the Tesla um, to the Tesla side. Yeah. So that was a lot of scanning. Head scratching. Yeah, head scratching, <laughs> trying to figure out. And, wow. We sped up some output channels too yep. to make it a little bit more efficient on cooling. Mm. Um, so that's basically the nutshell of our entire package. Now, you got some big motor mounts in here. You could drop down behind, uh, you know, into a frame rail or send, whatever. Send, cut, send? Yes, sir. We <laughs> love those guys. They're great. They're, 
they are the best period yeah. i love that we actually hung out hung out with them in sema wow they have been so good to us wow um, we always you know anything we could do to help them out too has been cool that's they awesome sponsored all our builds here i don't have anything here that doesn't have sand cut sand stuff on it apart from maybe the forklift is the one thing that doesn't have sand cut sand we gotta put a sand cut sand part on there yeah. you know what's funny the nick, logo. nick i use sand cut sand and nick is the one who turned me on to them originally they're amazing yeah i use them i have a prototype i'm working on and i i use them for that they're the best and yeah you know, every time i see them i literally give those guys a big hug almost. yeah I'm like i love that you're here because yeah. it's my life so much easier yeah totally Actually, yeah we're all sent that send that's cool um these are just they go out with all our motors just to kind of right and stuff nice but uh yeah so that's uh, sits under the car and um you know we got one okay you guys ready for this look at this car sitting here this just came back from sema um this is my personal vehicle oh my god look at this monster that's uh it's it's gorgeous i mean I've been working on this for two years. You remember this car? Yes, right? it was blue. It was blue and a little rusty. <laughs> it was just a little old dog. Yeah, I, I bought it off a little old lady, and then um, she has no idea. She, I'll be go pick her up in the next couple weeks. Really? So, yeah, I made her a promise when I, I finished the car, I take her out on a date. Oh my god, <laughs> that's awesome! My wife's totally cool with it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, mom, hey, wife, can we take this nice little, nice lady out for a date? She goes, okay, whatever. <laughs> Who is it? I'm like, it's the lady that used to own a blue car. She goes, oh, okay. <laughs> so here's where we go. Whoa. Just like the drawing. Just like the drawing. <laughs> wow, that's really nice details. Oh, my God. Is that pinstriping? Yes, sir. Wow. So, pinstripe, too. Hand pinstripe. Wow. Yeah, even feel these. On the stickers. Oh, my God. They're not stickers. Are yeah. you guys seeing this? They're not. <clears throat> yeah, it's awesome. Now, what's with the hood scoop? Oh, uh, so this is a one-off full carbon fiber. You see, it's all carbon. Yeah. Um, we actually designed this. I, me and my buddy Al designed this hood here. Then we sent it over to my buddy at AirTech. I had it all this made out of cardboard. Um, what I wanted for this car, it is functional. It is functional. It, it's fully functional. So this is functional because this is your this is your uh, you know your radiator. Then I have a battery and then motor cooler, so that draws the air out of the car. Um, the nineteen sixty seven Mustangs. That's my first car I ever had in my life. It did have a recessed louver on the front. This desk. is really recessed. Oh uh, yeah, we're, we're, look, we're, at, we're, look at the size of that. <laughs> well, the sixty sevens had recessed louvers with a little turn signal inside of it oh okay it was kind of cool oh so you could see yeah and i remember was, the cadillacs used to have a little indicator on the side yeah so i, yeah. I kind of took that idea for the 67 mustang but my buddy al already has fabrications like okay well how about we take it further because you don't have an engine in this. Mm. so we decided that this would be really cool because the car itself is pretty it's not like flared or anything else but when like a guy like you walk by yeah like this at a car right away like, What's, What's going, going on? on? <laughs> yeah. And there's no way it's your mid engine. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is Duke it? is like, what is it? What's going on there? Yeah. yeah. Everybody was like, whoa. Good call, Duke. Yeah. So <laughs> that's why we did that. Is it, it's it is functional. It's full yeah, it is functional. Fans. And the GTs had them. Remember the four GTs? Oh yeah. The big yeah. front. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Ford has been doing that for a long time. Wow. Like, Sixty seven was stuff that way, but it didn't. It wasn't as aggressive. So we're like. We don't have an engine. And Look at this, guys. This is the, the best part. Look at this. EV500 <laughs> instead of GT500. Oh, my God. Yeah, the car is, was really thought through. We, I mean, it's the cage goes from basically behind the headlight yeah. all the way to the trunk. Wow. It's fully caged. Um, it, it's it's gnarly. I mean, we pulled the pinstriping inside the car. The dash is all custom oh, painted wow. by, by Pete Hot Dog. He's the same guy that used to, if you guys are in the car shows or motorcycle shows, mm -hmm. uh, remember Jesse James and yeah. West Coast Customs? Yeah. That's the painter. No uh, way. This is the painter that this Oh my brush. God, that's crazy. So super, super cool dude. He's actually a friend of ours now. Yeah, this white, I don't know if you guys see it on camera, but this is some sort of pearlescent thing. Wow, this is like you can see it. it's beautiful. And then we did the, uh, uh, the pinstriping we did in orange um matches the high voltage cables right and that was an accident yeah he didn't know <laughs> he some orange tape and he goes that kind of looks cool and he went with it because he's an artist yeah and then he put his little signature down here and see hot dog cups and something he hand painted that oh my god faster than our camera guy could get him to wow. like, he's like hold on let me get the other side and by the time he 
walk around and just done. Wow. And look at this. This is nice. Yeah, it's all hand pin striped. And then uh, we actually have a functioning truck. Oh, look at that. Oh, no. Oh, dude. Somebody forgot about our friend. I totally forgot he's back here. Uh, this is Copo. He's our co pilot. Um, actually, his, it's his co pilot. Uh, the bonus on one of those, you can do all the race tracks I've gone to. I got nobody riding up with me. I throw in the passenger seat so I can carpool. Wow. So Copo lives back here for a little while. So uh, we got um, more batteries. Yeah. Underneath Copo here. We have three Tesla modules. Um, I these will... are 18650s right here. The, all these are just just hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of batteries. 444. Good brick. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> What's the math on that? Times 14. And these, this is a module, and this is a module, and this is a module like that. 6,216 of them. Oh my God. Where's the rest of them? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Oh my God. So you guys see the cage goes all the way to the back. Yeah. It goes all the way to the front. The cage work on this car is absolutely stunning. Wow. Um, Did that little old lady buy it new? No, it was her ex, uh, ex-husband's car and he died. <laughs> oh, but he bought it new, right? That's been around here the whole time. I believe something like that. Oh, look at this. I see him. More batteries, pin stripes. Dude, down below. You want to get you some light? Yeah. Here. Battery is down in the in underneath the seat in the floor where it belongs. Yeah, and then there's some back there. Back there's here. some behind that that uh, all that bead rolling. That you oh see yeah, that's cool. So everything in here, even the center console, is all handmade. So listen, that's not plastic. Yeah, that's all aluminum. Wow, it was all bent english wheeled or what it's crazy. yeah you know it was, who did the sheet metal work my buddy at abs fabrication oh wow that I did is sheet awesome metal work underneath the dash where you can't see it <laughs> okay and you got power steering yes yeah, so we got a power rack underneath wow power brakes um wow yeah this car is gnarly and then this is ridiculous we got am controls for some of the control systems oh yeah here i'll flip it on for you okay you can see the little boot screen that we put together. It's pretty fun. What do you guys think of this stuff? Oh, it's um, awesome. Yeah. You hear the car fired up, contactors. Oh, yeah. She's live. I can hear it. <laughs> yeah, the pump just kind of kicked on. I like wow. that old school. <laughs> yeah. Bam. Yep. Wow. Look at these crazy knockoff wheels. Oh, goodness. And cruises around silently until you hit the pedal. Yeah, it has a little interesting scream to it. Okay. Yeah, because the gearbox, you hear the rear end. Oh, my God. Yeah, you know, there's no rumble of the engine anymore. Yeah. Oh. So you hear different harmonics coming off the car, but this thing's oh. solid. It's such a solid car. And the chassis, I remember, is a uh, roadster shop chassis. Roadster shop yeah, chassis. Yeah, you get up underneath it. Here, look at this. this yeah. So... Um, to support the batteries, this is why we call it docks. It's a PhD seven three three. That's the original plate that came off in nineteen sixty five. No way. And, yeah, like you see, that's a little bumped up. Uh, he actually straightened it out and oh my God. repainted it for us. So we put diffusers in it. Wow. Fusers are metal. They actually fold up the battery pack and, and, and restructure. So oh, this is yeah. where the gas tank used to be. We got a four nine inch thirty five spline rear end in it. Um, that's a true track. Um, they say posi, but technically it's a. It's a torque factor in your end. Turns out even more. You see a carbon fiber driveline. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, no we, we were twisting the other one. <laughs> For those of you that know Mustangs, you're probably scratching your heads going, why does this thing have a frame? We have a Roadster shop chassis underneath this thing. Oh. So, these cars were originally unibodies. Oh. And this one is no longer. Well, it is, but uh, we we beefed it up quite a bit with this chassis underneath. It's four linked. Um, it's got coilovers all the way around, fully adjustable. Wow. So this car drives like a modern vehicle. All the geometries have completely changed. And uh, rack and pinion steering, four wheel bare disc brakes. Um, this thing stops on a dime and it takes off even faster. Wow! It's a ten second quarter mile car. Oh my god, ten seconds! 10 second. Dude, mid, mid to high tens. That's crazy. I and mean, I haven't even gone into the major tuning of it yet. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. Custom built taillights. I actually, uh, 
designed these in fusion. Wow. They nice. actually, uh, the acrylic, we, we, we cut here on lasers. Really? So we, we do all this nice. in What's this in the center? Just. I've got one tail light. The other one's printing right now. <laughs> I feel like I'm pretty young still, but that's like, mm, that makes me feel pretty old. <laughs> yeah, we printed these like two or three nights before we went to uh, yeah. Las Vegas. No uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. Uh, Duke does a lot of 3D printing on the middle school level. He lets them try it out and you know, whatnot. There you go. That's it's it. It's such a good thing to get that, like, because for me, the CAD stuff never sunk in because I can't hold it. The CAD's not tactile. But oh, when yeah. You print it out, Right. In what, an hour, 30 minutes, whatever it is, depending on the part, and hold it in your hand yeah. and feel it. Like, it. It's another, like, that's amazing. Well, we have, avenue. yeah, we have these tail lights for it that were billet that I bought, like, you know, from a specialty shop. Yeah. And then we put them on there and we're looking at them going, ah, oh, they're so bulky looking. Uh, it stuck out like an inch and a half. Oh, uh, yeah. And then my painter's like, dude, you're not going to put those pieces of junk on there, are you? I'm like, <laughs> no. Of course I wasn't. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah. well, what do you think? He goes, man, we got to make this thing more low profile. Mm -hmm. So we went from something that stuck out about this far as a triangle to something that's really, really low pro. Yeah. There's no bolt holes around anymore. Oh, yeah. I designed it with threads from the inside. And 3D prints got so good that they're threaded. Oh, wow. I asked about these old louvers. Um, I was going to have the orange constriping eventually uh, inside. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to make Oh, that would be great standout. Yeah, just a little That's detail on cool. to match these lines here. Nice. So we're playing around with ideas and cool parties. If it doesn't come out, I'll throw them away for another pair and go. Dude, what about like, uh, um, what's that called? The uh, epoxy pour with yeah. an LED behind it. We could do something like that too. <laughs> I mean, that's a good thing about 3D printing is if you don't like it, you go right back and you know 3D printing pretty well. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Like, that's great. I put little draft angles on it. What kind of 3D printer was it? Um, I, I, I wouldn't know, but I, I don't know all the models. No, okay, all right, that works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Duke, what do you think, man? Are you going to start making some lights for your motorcycle? Yeah, that'd be a good idea. My entire motor was 3D printed at one point. Oh, wow. One well, of my prototypes. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah it's wow. awesome. Well, it's exactly like instead of spending you know thousands and thousands of dollars on making it out of you know metal um this machine's been with me for about five years no kidding yeah i built this from a from a from an online kit it's called a folger tech ft4 um that was like 400 bucks do you well, nick uh and parts. duke do you guys know this company no no nah, it's 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 literally one of those like okay kit Bio. yeah you get you get this extruded crap, right right and then you get these like in plastic and you yeah. cut them out okay and then the motherboard is like throw that in the garbage yeah and then you you know i i found another mo motorboard uh motherboard online i've tested different motherboards like these this is this is like an upgraded one that i put in i got two of them so we do um put different motherboards in them and then mm. we could like I'm a software guy, so oh, yeah. I found some software online and then tweaked it and then put nice. it on the board. And then this is my workhorse. Yeah. This thing runs so much. It's even 3D printed itself. So all these little pieces you see on here wow. are pieces that I made later um, to make it work better. Like this whole entire head unit that actually oh, yeah, look at that. the hot end. Um, that's a manifold. It's actually, um, that's where all the air comes down. Some guys oh, no way. On. Mine's a 360 degree blower. Oh, like uh, like a Dyson fan. Yeah, so like the opposite. Yeah, it blows. Wow. It sucks. Right. It's gone from suck to blow. <laughs> I love space balls. Yeah, that's the best move. So, um, <laughs> in, so the old fans are kind of just blowing on side. I was getting weird prints, so I yeah. designed this little manifold to intake here. Right. And it blows all the air completely around it, so it's Sweet. a really, really nice and uniform finish. This awesome. printer prints gorgeous parts. Wow. Oh, there's yeah. one of our tail lights. That's great. This is like one of the first prototypes. And this actually has threads or yeah. do you thread it later? No, it's got threads. What? Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. That's yeah, this thing's I think precise down to like 20 microns. Oh my God. What Jeez. material are you using it? I just use PLA. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't get it too hot outside. I mean, I live in Southern California, so that blo that black tail light parked in the middle of summer. Yeah. It may not like me. Yeah, yeah. It might start to get a little soft. Yeah. But the clear stuff, like I have this on the outside of my house with like hooks and hangers for for equipment and like you know shovels and yeah. dust pans. 
it's been there for four years wow the clear stuff doesn't get hot but anything dark color yeah and i and the uv believe it or not i mean it's been in the sun for four and a half one of my dust pans was hanging off the hook for four and a half five years wow no problem no problem huh interesting but, but again, don't, don't they ever say sunlight ruins the 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 pla stuff or sunlight ruins everything yeah well yeah it hasn't fallen apart yet okay you know maybe it's 10 years i don't know the show <laughs> or the uh, the lifeline is in sun yeah it's in full sun every single day duke do you ever have trouble with the uh do you ever have trouble with the uh with the with the sunlight and your and your filter no no okay i'm lucky i guess i don't know okay. no, anything i've had outside has never faded oh okay cool except for dark objects like blacks yeah they tend to they absorb the sunlight oh yeah and i remember one time i had this black piece in the rolling around my bed and it was like august it was yeah summer and i grabbed it i'm like oh uh, it's 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 not hard anymore it's got yeah. a little bit of pliability it gets soft or does it get brittle no it gets soft oh it okay. gets soft it doesn't get brittle oh it gets soft and then i built a rack for my refrigerator to hold like all these vitamins oh yeah and uh that's been in my fridge for like five years four or oh, five years wow hasn't gotten brittle or broken no kidding it works just fine that's awesome cool man i'll have to, I'll have to wait a couple of years to when i see my students oh I'm yeah sure i'll have a story about it oh all the <laughs> stuff you guys are making right yeah, yeah yeah look at this this is awesome man this is all your uh all the stuff from racing and whatnot that's great the one on the end is my the, the, the two on the end are my favorite. Ah, nice. Thanks, man. <laughs> Dude, this is great. I can't believe it. Wow, look at this. So I drew this August 8th, 2020. Look at that. Dude, that's really nice, man. Oh, I Thank you. Dude, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Oh, man, that's all. One of the first things I put up in here. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I was, you were so stoked on this. You were so, so stoked. stoked. Like you were so excited that yeah, I was I like, can't wait to put it somewhere. Yeah, he. I did this and I was like, oh, I don't know if I can pull this off. So I just kind of drew the thing. He's so excited and he was so into this vision that I appreciated your drive and your direction to do it. That's version one point oh. <laughs> yeah, and here we are. That's amazing. That was crazy, man. That's awesome, man. That's cool. Look at this. Wow, this is amazing. It's, it's come full story. I used to me start with nothing. I know. Yeah. I know. I was just kind of tinkering around. Yeah. You, you know, but like with your kids, I mean, I'm not some brainiac that went to college and did a bunch of stuff. I just rolled up my sleeves and did it. Yeah. You know? And especially when people told me that I couldn't do something, I'm like, yeah. nah. F you. Yeah. I, I just want to do it. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, I, I don't like when people tell me I can't do stuff. What yeah. Mean? Like, because I look at it and go, like, well, why not? yeah like what, what What do you mean i can't do it mm -hmm. well you just can't do it it's just too complicated all right get the hell out of my way let me let yeah. me try i mean you're gonna fail right but eventually if you keep trying you, you'll, you'll get it done yeah and you know now we're they feature us in race engine magazine every one of those mags in there has something wow. about us i mean wow it's been it's cool because it's like we we did this and it's not me it's i have a great team of people here Mm -hmm. and when you you know these guys are rather i think it's a british magazine mm -hmm. they go into like all this crazy look at some of this Whoa. stuff i mean state-of-the-art engine tech you know blowers um there's us oh yeah that's the actual chassis from the mustang um they're talking about you know rotary in motion and they're talking about mm -hmm. the whole ev packaging mm -hmm. spacing motor masses mm -hmm. you know this is a whole article on torque curves and what Whoa. what electric motors you know formula e and and it's pretty neat, you know, that they actually featured one of our broad That's products. That's great! And wow. They, they, you know, now you're seeing electric stuff. Yeah. And in, the, in the in the mainstream. Yeah, and you know, I'm not gonna get into politics here, but I don't belong in California. Just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's. Um, I'm I'm not your typical EV guy. Someone's like, oh, dude, you're saving the planet, bro. It's yeah. Like, no we're not we're going fast we're going fast <laughs> yeah and i know what goes into these cars i know what it takes to charge them this is the future way into the future i mean yeah the, the amount of energy these things take down yeah. is tremendous yeah like i i know what my my wife drives a tesla right i drive a tesla yeah i also got all this electric stuff behind me damn we can't charge together at the house no yeah. all the circuits are right you know what what i like what i tell people people always ask me they say oh well you know the grid can't handle it and this and that and i just say look i just like having the option yeah 
Yeah. It's like, imagine if there was one pizza place in your whole town and there was no other type of food, that pizza would be $500 a slice. I mean, you want options. You want different types of foods, different types of neighborhoods, different types of options. And in this way, like you can make a choice and then the bad food goes away and the good food stays, you know? Well, yeah. And I really, I talked on the panel uh, at SEMA about this and I really can't stand the government. Like yeah. Heavy hand. It's just, too, yeah. That's, leave me alone. I'm an adult. Right. I don't need you to tell me what to do. Yeah. If I want to drive an EV, I'll go drive an EV. Right. But if you tell me to go drive an EV, I'm yeah. going to tell you to pack sand and go get the biggest gas guzzler and roll coal all they want. Yeah. So let it happen organic. Right. Let it happen on its own. Let it just. If it's a better it. product, it's going to work. Absolutely. And that's the funny thing is because not everybody wants the same thing, you know. So like, if you want to drive a gas car, go ahead. You want to drive an electric car, go ahead. Uh, you know, it's just an option. Absolutely. I know. Yeah. I tell people all the time, and 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 it's ironic that the people on the edge of the performance, like here's a world record uh, in an EV, and 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 you're saying, hey, I don't want to force this on anyone. No. Exactly. Yeah, it's like I call it hot rodding 2.0. Yeah, and and it's so just a different. It's a different way of going fast. Mm -hmm. And that yellow car out there, little giant, has been around since 1957. Now mm -hmm. it's got it's had everything underneath the hood. Mm -hmm. It's had small block Chevys. It's had you know turbocharged little like booster motors. It. It's <laughs> had everything in it. Yeah, the fastest it has ever gone. Was with electric power. wow no kidding you know, we'd be there by a solid like 10 miles an hour wow no kidding yeah and which is that's huge. amazing and but then again i'm not saying we're better than gas yeah we're just different right and i love gas i mean I look you gotta see this is mark willie right yes here. that guy looks like a man <laughs> <laughs> mark you they're gotta still, they still make those rad <laughs> mark say hold on a second say hi to eddie how you doing <laughs> Unmute yourself, Mark. Oh, you got to unmute it. Wait, Duke, tell you him unmute it. it. <laughs> Eddie, I can tell that Ron likes you because he made the best posts ever to promote this event. Um, <laughs> something about something about you making diesel vehicles. Is that right? Yes, actually, I had a cool outside. I actually drive a diesel, and it's tuned, and it throws black smoke everywhere, and it pisses off all the Californians, and I don't give a crap. <laughs> your your hey, car, your rules. That's yeah. it. Hey, you see, there it is. Are you in California, Ron? Where yeah, are you, man. man. I'm in California. My garage, my rules. Yeah. <laughs> We had a week off at school, so I was like, "Oh, let me go visit my favorite people." <laughs> you know? Oh my god! Uh, hey, um, yeah, I uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, uh, Mark, you didn't get to see it, but dude, let me just quickly show you this insane car that he's got here. Look at this thing. Yeah, look. I mean, I know it's being recorded, so you could rewatch it, but you got to see this right now. This is like madness. This is not normal. Look, I won't even show him that car yet. You got to see this. This is a Tesla El Camino. Tesla Mino. Tesla Mino. Oh, oh I have year? this shirt. I was going to wear it. Oh, I forgot. Ah, I got some more shirts. Oh, awesome. Look at this. It's a Tesla. So, oh, oh, interesting. That's his. <laughs> Isn't that wild? It, it's a it's a good body style. So this is taking a a standard vehicle and then adding a bed, right? Yeah. Well, there used to be a back seat here and a trunk, and now there's a pickup truck bed. And it and, oh, it, and it. It looks like that's stainless steel. Am I right or aluminum? Uh, I think this is aluminum. Wow, welding aluminum. That's a oh yeah joyous activity oh yeah <laughs> and then uh so that's what this was one of his first projects and then over here this is the latest latest madness look at this thing is that a mustang yep a shelby it's very similar except yeah this one's got something under the hood that's a little different the ev 500 dude this has like I don't even know something like 800 horsepower. Look at these crazy Look at those scoops. Right. What it's got in the this, world? It's got this in it. 
This is a Tesla motor, but reconfigured so it fits longitudinal like this in a car. 4.6 million gigawatts. Yeah. Eddie, can that I just lift up? Just okay. Is that like a, a metallic uh, candy apple? Oh, yeah. It's candy. Look at that. Look at that. that. Yeah. Uh, it turns like maroon. And there's an orange, those orange accents to match the wires, the orange electric. Oh, wire. yeah. You see them? Look at that. Today? Yeah. Oh. Looks insane. And that's not even the motor. That's the inverters, and then the motor's even deeper. Yep. We went through the whole car, so you'll have to watch the video, but I'm just kind of giving you a little quick show around. So oh. the, the the fact that the inverter is a feature under the hood, has that ever existed before? Nope. Everyone else's stuff is ugly, and I hate it because when I did this, I'm an old-school hot rodder. I mean, I'm not – the guys, I looked up to those dudes. I was a kid. I had a 67 Mustang with polished heads and yeah. you know, polished valve covers. And I'd get underneath there with my mother's polish and more <laughs> bolts, chrome, chrome, chrome. Yeah. You got to make it look good. Yeah. yeah. It, it's like this I, I could see you down. saying we took the inverter and we bored it out. <laughs> yeah. We're actually doing that. We do that electronically, though. <laughs> yeah. And, well, the new inverter that we have has different IGBDs. And oh, it's, really? It's oh yeah. Wow. It's like adding where this is like cute little jets and carburetors. Okay. Our new ones are like blah. Wow. Yeah, eight hundred amps each. What? Yeah, three per phase. So oh you my. do the math. Whoa. Twenty-four hundred amps per phase. Oh my god. And it goes up to twelve hundred volts. Dude, they're they're gonna they're gonna be a supplier. This is just the beginning. We're really Revolt, at the, beginning stages, the right? dawn We're, of inverters. Yeah. yeah. Dude, well, that's a carburetor, basically. Yeah. And can we get a? Do you have a flashlight? We could go and see Team Vesco car real quick. Yeah, I just have this little one. Okay. Do we have a better flashlight in here? I don't have a good one. Phone. Uh, oh. That might work. Yeah, That'll work. Well, it should be Whenever Ron does stuff like this, I think it's the gods punishing me for being a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you see this missile right here? Is it coming out okay? Yeah. No, what? Don't worry about it. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, no, it's actually perfect. Yeah. So this is like uh this is a torpedo. <laughs> yeah. And uh it's got it's got two of those systems in there, two yeah. Tesla motors and uh the revolt system. And uh this is uh what three hundred and fifty three point four, three fifty nine was our top speed. Three hundred and fifty nine miles an hour on the Bonneville salt flats. We were going for three seventy five this year, but the flooded. Look at this. Oh, you even covered up the chutes. Yeah. Wow. About five miles an hour. Really? Wow. Because there's no drag yep. or less. And uh this 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 body we talked about, it's been around since uh the 30s or 40s. This car's been around since 1957. Oh my god. Mm. Uh, how how wide are the tires under there, Ron? Oh, tires? They're probably super thin. I don't know. You got that light? I could see under his tires. Yeah, I can see him. Oh wow, there you go. Yeah, they're 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 ground down. They have almost no rubber on them because the centrifugal force would just rip them apart. Whoa, that's wild. Oh wow, they're showing cords in the last. Yeah, no, it's only two runs. So scary. The last ten miles at best. That's it. Oh my god, since 1933, that's the team. Wow, and it's Run. not leaking oil. Holy cow, what's that? No, it's not, oil. Leak, it's no. not leaking yeah. oil either. No, it's not leaking oil. Yeah, the only oil in this car is in the, the quick change rear end. Oh, yeah, I think it's like a, what, a, a quarter to a couple yeah, quarts. Yeah. <laughs> no Chevy That's parts, great. Though. No Chevy parts, so don't leak. Here's all the drivers. Wow, this is wild. And the cool thing is. They've got this uh, at a at a high school sometimes to for the students to get a chance to work on it. Yep, they actually put the motors back in. They put the cooling systems. They helped us a lot with a lot of the stuff in there. So high school kids worked on this, and now it's going to a different high school <laughs> to be as like a, a demo project for the kids to learn about it. Oh, cool! That way, I don't have to store it here anymore. Yeah. Oh wow. What are you going to say, Duke? High school kids work on it, and then you run at 357 miles an hour. 
Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> oh my god. I'm going back to high school. <laughs> Short four months. Four months from from conception, from the whole idea coming up, right? Yeah. To running. I mean, the first time this thing turned tires under its own power was off the start line. Oh my we god! We never tested it. Really? We didn't have to, we what? Didn't have to, we didn't have to test it. I'm gonna have a heart attack thinking about you guys doing that, and you already did it. Yeah. <laughs> Eric Ritter sitting there, this car's not driven under its own power. First time he puts his foot on the gas, it goes, what was it, 290? Like 280 something. 280 something with the shakedown run of this oh car. Oh my God. The, yeah. the, that belt's never turned on the, it's never turned on the load on it. Yeah. My brother looks at me at the, uh, sorry, I'm being rolls away. It wasn't even 10 feet away. And he looks at me and he's like, is it really, really? Drew's fantastic. He's <laughs> like on payroll as the official naysayer. <laughs> <laughs> and he he's like, he goes, we better hope the guy. We get the jump, the jump in the chase track, and uh, we get down to the end, ran a perfect run, and he looks at me and goes, Yeah, he just got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's what brothers are for. Yeah. <laughs> the whole time he's like, This is never gonna work. Like, he's working on the car. Wow. At the shop, like, this isn't gonna work. Oh no my god. As wow. he's the wrench is trying to make it work. <laughs> so, he's the know. kind of guy, like, We're gonna all die, and the bomb's coming. Don't stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We like, like, like uh, the movie Three Hundred. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's that guy. <laughs> nice. Die trying. It's wow. Like, he's, but he's negative the whole time. Yeah, yeah, die. yeah. This is never gonna work. <laughs> just do it anyway. Just do it anyway. <laughs> All right, let's get a bonus round. Yeah. Hey, let's look at your your van. <laughs> oh, you got a bike. Oh, what's going on with the bike? All right. All right. Bonus round. Bonus round. So this one has had nine world records. Since Wait, this is electric as well? Oh, yeah. Holy crap. This motor, the design of this bike started out with this motor on a bench. Okay, then, stop. I know that motor. You do. It's from it's from Google? It's, like a, it's, it's a UQM. It's a, it's a bus motor. I it, mean, they've gone through a few Oh, okay, 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 okay. I thought, I thought it was this uh, like a hub motor for a, for a drone from Google, oh, 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 oh. Go experimental oh, Google works. Yeah, it might be. They, they, they were sold in a lot Is of different Is it TM4? Names. No, it's what's the company? A lot of different names. UQM was yeah. who it was at the time. Okay, it's I didn't throw it aside. Now. Wow. Uh, but it started out, the design of this bike was uh, that motor was on a bench. A in bus like motor. 2008 or something. Nine days after they put the motor on the bench, started making tubes, they ran a world record. What? This was the first bike to run an official land speed record under electric power. Really? Uh, it's done 206 mile an hour was the last record it set and it did it it went through the traps in a big ball of fire because the batteries exploded so with the guy on it with the guy on it yeah. burnt, burnt the shit out of him because you got to stop it takes a decent amount of time to stop duke you think you hey, can ron? handle this with this hog hey ron yes whatever whatever's in their water and in their refrigerator start drinking and eating it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these guys are a sight, dude. <laughs> it's awesome. We're all nuts. It's good. We got problems. I tried playing the brake pad because this thing has, you know, it's got a bus motor and then the brake pads. There you go. The brake pads are about this big and there's uh, two of them. <laughs> so it takes a good amount of time to stop. Look at this big up. Anderson connector. <laughs> oh my God. And that's both. Right. That's not just. This is like. There's no switch. It's literally just no. It's, no, you want to see it. You want to <laughs> boom. You want to see that disconnect. I'm with him. I like how it's all burned too because it plugged Whoa. in one time when it was a. Uh... So this thing sat was... in the Peterson Museum for a few years. Uh, okay. We, uh, the owner of this bike, pulled it out for us to put new batteries in it and, and rerun it. Well, I called Vesco and I said, "Hey, I got this psychopath that is, is over here, and he wants to build his own land speed uh, motorcycle. It's the guy that you know." Did the world speed on the land speed stuff on my motorcycles? He wants to build his own now. Uh -huh. So I was asking Rick about head tube angles, uh, you know, wheelbase lengths for motorcycles because those guys have the formula for everything. Mm. And they're like, hold on a second. Kent's got, Kent, our buddy Kent's got one of those sitting in his garage that he hasn't used in years. Why don't you just take his? Three <laughs> done. Well, <laughs> Kent, I would have been shorter. If oh my God. This thing was parked and just sat. So the water, tap water that was in it. Setting it for ten years. Speaking of, we got a drink. Whoa, we got a drink. Whoa. Uh, so it was, it was just gummed up like crazy. The wiring was corroded from end to end. Yeah, you know, you've probably worked on stuff where you cut the wire back. Oh, it's kind of corroded. So you cut it back a bit further to get. You know, oh my god! And I'm cutting and cutting and cutting. 
full foot length of wiring, you cut in the middle, and it's just powder in the middle. Wow. So pretty much every inch of wiring this thing is right Oh, my up. God. And uh, it's covered, so you never knew. Hundreds of hours. He was working next door. He was coming in here after hours. They, they don't make kids like this anymore. <laughs> they this do guy, in Wales. Yeah, I guess they're going <laughs> to go to Wales to get somebody to kick ass. Wow. So, yeah. Do you have an Instagram? No, no, I don't. I don't uh, what? He's on the YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, because well, we want to tag you in I'm the a video. Man with that stuff. He's okay. known as the Wheeling Welshman. All right, we'll look you up. We'll find you. And, uh, he's all over our YouTube channel. All right. He's, he's, all right. He's, uh, he's an instant celebrity here. That's amazing. Just, just wait a few years. I'll have my name in lights. There you You'll go. find me. Yeah, man. Just like Johnny Be Good. Well, he say what do you mean a few years? It should take you less than nine days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is wild. Cool. And wait, you drove this? Yeah, you were driven this about ten mile an hour. Yeah. <laughs> well, he he gets rained out. Yeah. He actually, he, he got, he's on crotch rockets, and he's not some, you know, he's down knee on the ground, <laughs> 160 miles an hour, just Whoa. blazing through corners. He's oh my god! <laughs> wow, this is cool. Just want to find a, a someone who will let us run this thing. It keeps raining. It was six events in a row being rained out. So wow. I brought the weather with me from Wales. Oh sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Drag strip. I mean, we're at the point where that might be the, the next step. Well. So what kind yeah, of wheel yeah. are you burning back? Jesus. Oh it's my a God. pretty standard wheel. Uh, the tires, there's an approved list for tires. You can only oh, run okay. four different rear tires over 200 miles an hour. So what bus did this come out of? This is an off-the-shelf motor okay. for companies who want to have an electric bus. So you get yeah. 650 pound-feet of torque at the rear. Is it called the Sumo? No? It is now, yes. Okay. Is now. <laughs> there's a motor that they call that that Dana, like Dana Axles, yeah. Dana Axles bought TM4, which was UQM, I think. Maybe, I, probably. So he's driving yeah. 650 pound feet of torque in his motorcycle. Well, that was oh the yeah. oh took this controller and breathed on Oh, it. yeah. We, we, we actually <laughs> turned it up. So it's probably got closer to probably 700. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It's now 200. Yeah. In the power phase. Sorry, power phase. <laughs> my diesel now, truck doesn't have that much. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, oh yeah, it's he's 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 pulling ridiculous torque. Wow, crazy! I mean, the limiting factor is aerodynamics and, and traction at this point. Wow. Um, oh, what kind of batteries you got going? This is the same batteries as the yellow car out there. Really? Uh, Honda Insight. Really? So hybrid stuff. It's awesome. There's no energy density at all. You'd only go 10, 50 miles on the road. Wow. But you can do that 10, 50 miles. <laughs> oh, is it because it's the big C factor, or yeah, exactly. oh yeah, I dumped, I dumped I 400 amps out of this little sucker. What? 400 amps. Out okay, of let me just explain real quick. Okay, so you might have energy in the battery, but how big is the 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 faucet? So it's like okay, it's like you have a reservoir in the town, and you go to open it. Uh, you open it, you've got this little like hose or whatever. Maybe you might have high pressure. Maybe you might have a pretty good size hose. But if you have a high C rating, you could dump the whole town's water supply. Yeah. If you had a, if you had this a, this is basically a fire hose. Yeah, it's a fire. Yeah, this is a fire hose versus your garden hose. Right. This thing's nuts. Exactly. Any battery will push. It will start your car. Oh my god, that's You'll crazy. Those in sixty seconds. Wow. So how come they have such high capacities that designed in no, because they don't, oh sorry uh c rating because they don't want to put them in the cars uh, so they make them as small as possible but they've still got to take the car up you know, oh so the stoplight got it x number x amount oh of so there's lots of you torque like for a short amount of time exactly so they're, they're like oh you there. don't have a good uh mileage but we'll well, performance is fine. Those so you can... insights have a 1.2, I think, kilowatt hour battery pack. Nothing. Nothing. Because they don't want to put the they don't... in the car. Right, right, right. Perfect for us, though, because we buy them up. Wow. This whole pack is, well, almost no room for it in the bike. It's enormous. Has barely more capacity than your dirt bike pack. Yeah, which is five for one I have a 5.4. It's 5 something, yeah. Yeah, 5.4 in the in Alta, and it's about. You know, it's it's small. It's about as big as a smaller than a five gallon drum mm -hmm. or five gallon bucket. His is this entire section, and it's like what seven point eight kilowatts. Yeah, yeah, and it's massive. <laughs> but that thing will pr pump out a thousand amps with the, 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 by sleeping. Wow, that's about Thou a thousand eighty volts. Really, four hundred and eighty volts. Four hundred and eighty. No, volts. that's crazy. What you just said four hundred and eighty volts, a thousand amps. Yeah. yeah. 
That's crazy. I know. That's crazy. Someone who's DC. Me from someone who's come from the like house wiring world and thinking that you know British houses. Oh, we got we got two hundred and twenty volts. Like we're, we're the big dog. Yeah. It's nothing. Wow. Wow. Next, wow. Two phases of one ten. Yeah. This is how is it? Yeah. Yeah. The, that's how we get the two twenty here. <laughs> but this is a full four sixty coming out of one wire. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. That's crazy. Awesome. Cool. You guys got all that? I'm going to quiz you guys later. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I've, I've, you're building a house. It, Mark, this guy's building a house. Is it, is it energy efficient? Are you doing it? <laughs> I have a 25 kilowatt solar array going on. It. Okay. That's per hour. You just happen to have on the podcast tonight, uh, uh, like an energy efficient house, dude. Oh, cool. So I mean, we're, our, our, our new, Rules in California are just don't get me started. No, do it for yourself. It's don't worry about well, it. Well, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We got two by eight walls. Everything's wrapped. Up. We don't have crazy weather out here. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, you're not in a weather situation. No, but yeah, we, we did do a lot to the house. Yeah, so okay. It's, it's well insulated. I've never used the heater on it or oh, cool so it yet. But then again, I've only had the house finished and wrapped for about four months. But it did go through summer. Yeah. Tonight's going to be our coldest night. It's supposed to get up in the like low 40s. Tonight. Whoa. So I brought the weather with me. Yeah, you did. Damn it. Uh, well, low, uh, low, low 40s, all that means is you can put a hoodie on, right? Um, <laughs> uh, we're, we're, uh, we're really, really soft here. My wife's from Jersey. <laughs> I was born there, but I don't have any of that left. She looks at me and I'm like, fuck it up. She's like, Look at these guys are wearing pants. Well, he's from Wales. He's still powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard not to get a little, a little soft. Yeah, no, but I will tell you, with low humidity, it's kind of cold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's from Chicago, so he deals oh. he deals with energy problems all the time. Okay, so uh, let's show us the van, and we'll wrap this thing up. Come on, bonus. The race rig. We call it the creeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hey, Ron, so you don't just have to remember. Just remember, Ron. This is being recorded, so try to at least act happy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Okay, you don't have to show us inside if it's if it's private. <laughs> when the vans are rocking, you don't come and knocking. <laughs> Look at this thing. This is my my race rig. I only got room for one. Oh, this is for vehicle. putting bikes in here. So, yeah, I got my cool box, my AC, my my coolers, my Oh, wow, you got amps. Nice AC, awesome. Big How do you power the AC? Two massive lead acids up there. Okay. I love lithium, but for the simplicity and the fact that I can just abuse those lead what is, acids. What is this? What is marine this? vinyl. Marine was, vinyl. This van was disgusting when I got it. Okay. I tore it out to, to nothing, and uh, this was cheap. It was probably I got probably thirty bucks in materials for the walls. Wow, um, so awesome. And then it's all snaps around the windows, so that you see a big bunch yeah. of material there. Yeah. You snap it up against the windows, uh -huh. and then you've got a bike in the back. No one can see it to steal it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, smart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't look like you'd have a motorcycle in here. No, it just looks like a, like a panel van. Windows on it shut. Oh, the seat is out. You remember that 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 uh, blue truck? Yeah. No had it. Well, I saw him carrying the seat. Up <laughs> like, no, I want a bench. This is, reminds me because I I drove. Is this a Vandora? No, this is a G20. Uh, it's, it's similar. It's newer sim than it looks. It's got a 72 front end on it, but it's a 1993 van. Yeah, I my dad had a delivery van. Yeah, they and were, I remember driving these things. The you know, the they handle pretty good. You like right. and, and, the road, not doing like handbrake too. Oh <laughs> Jesus Christ! Because <laughs> there's no uh, spring on there. If you pull the the parking brake out, you can just oh hammer on the e brake and it doesn't lock down. So this is the best part <laughs> right here. And he's got the Different, classic. Memory. Vice There's grip. Permanent than a temporary fix. Vice grip. Do you have a flashlight? Yeah. So we can see this. Vice grip windows. No, no, that's, oh, the, that's the door the, handle. Oh, that's the door handle. <laughs> oh, got electric windows. Oh, nice. This I snapped <laughs> off three of these, so I just gave up and. Vice grip. I like the label. I, I think that's the only oh, time a vice window. grip is actually yeah. used. They should never this is, away. This is the best thing. You could flick your cigarette out yep. there and you can get some nice air coming in. And why did they get rid of these, man? These are awesome. <laughs> oh, man. CB. Oh, yeah. No way. Well, this is my chase truck for El Mirage. Oh, hell yeah. You got to have a CB for that. Dude, this, 
Look at this chrome. <laughs> chrome CV. I paid five bucks extra for the chrome one. Oh my god, dude, this is awesome. <laughs> oh man, this is cool. Breaker, breaker, one nine. You got your ears on. Come back. <laughs> yeah. We uh, what is it? Uh, um, oh man, eastbound and down. <laughs> loaded up and trucking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the rest of the lines, but uh, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Oh, got a long way to go and a short time to get there. That's awesome. I didn't want to admit to knowing all the words. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie. Oh my god, The Bandit, right? Was it from Smoking the Bandit? Yeah, Smoking the Bandit. Yep. yep. That song was written for that movie, I think. <laughs> we just watched that last week. Yeah. All right, that's basically it. We're gonna wrap it up. Yeah, it was nice meeting all you guys. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hey, get those kids doing some cool stuff. I mean, if we can inspire anybody to do anything, I mean, we're just a bunch of knuckleheads around here. Especially this guy. He's, he's smarter than I am. He actually went to school and stuff. But I mean, we all we all have like you know our our, our weaknesses and you know our strengths, and it's all about having a good team too. I mean, that mm -hmm. that's what really brings us together. Like, I can't do all this stuff alone. I started this place by myself, but I I can't do it. And the only reason we excel at this stuff is because we have people like Maddie, Snow, a couple of other guys here that you guys haven't met before. But it, it is a family. It's a community. I'm glad you guys do this with the shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, we, we're, we're doing a Monday night every night. That's a great sorry, idea. Monday. Lunchtime. Lunchtime with Rebolt. And we're going to be. Yeah, they're going to go. They're going to go live. Uh, Instagram. Instagram live. And so you can talk and ask questions or whatnot. And we'll do like a one hour session every Monday mm -hmm. and at lunch. And we're just going to have we have different people on like we had kevin erickson the other day that did that electrolyte he's oh, awesome nice. yeah, he had yeah, yeah, yeah. oh that's cool yeah he's, he <laughs> drove that thing a thousand miles from sema he built it himself yeah no problems quick I don't think anybody else driving that no car. one's ever driven the aftermarket ev that far <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i think he holds a record wow Where, what what state did he go back to Colorado. Oh my God! Through the Rockies. No, yeah. that's great. That's what that's a trip. A day for the for the snow, whatever it was. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah, he's like, like oh, the, the mountain pass is snowed over, and he's gonna hang out. I'm like, that's just cool. Oh my God, that's but, awesome. So we, we we're, did. We're, I miss the question. Did you ask these guys if they had shop class in high school? Yeah. Oh, that was my first question. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, he. They both were we, like we all, knee deep in the hot shop class. They did machining and all kinds of uh, shop supervisor junior year. Yeah. Oh, no, we had fun. Yeah, yeah. They, he was into it, man. He was so into it. Bang stuff with hammers. Get to two big bits of metal. He even knows the name of your shop. What's the name of your shop teacher? Uh, his name was uh, Wyler. Wire. We had this big wire <laughs> wheel. We used to call it a wire wheel. <laughs> and uh and this guy was tough, right? No, he was a badass. I mean, he just didn't know he was just he was no BS. Like, he, like people hated him too. Like good. But, 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 if you, but if you actually got to know him, yeah. And and he I mean he was really he was a tough guy. Yeah. Yeah. But if you got to know him and you just didn't act like an idiot, <laughs> but like to him you acting like an idiot was anything. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the, the the amount of leeway he gave you was like this big, and he had, he had no patience for dipshits or anything. He'd be like, "No, you book work." And it's like, "Oh man, oh you you're not welding today. You're you're sweeping the floor." I'm like, "But I didn't." Uh, so he was. You had to learn how to really meet him, and I I didn't didn't just learn how to work on metal with that guy, but I really learned how to like mm. not piss off certain people's mm. characters. Mm. So I learned a lot from him, too, and I wish he was still around. You wow, know, wow. Is, I, I don't know, but uh, hey, Mr. Wilder, if you're watching this, you're cool. <laughs> Someone has to meet him. That's awesome. All right, cool. We'll wrap it up. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Uh, okay, so we'll uh, end the recording there and see you guys on the next one. Oh, actually, wait. The next one, I think we're taking a break for Thanksgiving, right? Uh, yeah, not next week. No, not next week. Two, two, two weeks. weeks from one. Okay, two weeks. Yeah, two okay, weeks. Don't listen to me. I don't know what's going on. All right. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs>